Hello, hello, everybody. Okay, we're going live. We're going live, and whatever's whatever's going on over here is now live. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Uh, you caught us in oh, the middle no, of. Oh no! Don't worry about it. Oh it's no! Fine. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, we're. We were talking. We, oh, yeah. It was now. Now, now it's gonna see. Everyone's gonna think it was scandalous. Yeah, no, in no, reality. no, no, no. We, we were just. Scandalous. We we went from the Don't Zelda trailer to some some weird internet shit that Jesse sent me. I'm happy there's still weird internet shit. I need it. I, you know. <laughs> mm. I watch the meme compilations. I like. I like that the world is still weird. <laughs> oh, it's weird. <laughs> I don't go looking for memes at all anymore because they just show up in my text message with a from Kyle message. Yeah, like that's, I send you the good stuff. Yeah, I don't I don't need to search for memes. I'm going right. to do it. To you. Also, thank you. All right. Seriously, uh, uh, we're not going to, you know, official podcast hasn't started yet. But Kyle, I, I do. I want to give a shout out to Kyle for being the last of my friends to still send actual memes and not just freaking TikTok links. Oh, yeah. No, I can't. Um, yeah, yeah, I can't. Uh... Thank you. I can't take that assault of humanity. It's just there's too many people in the world. Like TikTok <laughs> is to life what thinking about drawing is going to art station. I, I can't do it. <laughs> oh, I mean, you, you know, you could, it checks out. Yeah, you yeah, could filter your TikTok. Like if you filled it with people, you no, with like TikTok fail accounts, then you would feel better it, about. It's not gonna have like houses in the background or cars or dogs. Like it's it's just it's too much. You know, like like I'm I'm getting into Warhammer 40k for the first time. You know, people are like, "Are you painting it? Are you painting?" I'm like, "No, nah, I want to learn how to play first. But like, if you Google how to paint, like 30 minute long video, huge videos. My painting's better than yours. I fix someone's painting. It's just it's it's so <laughs> overwhelming." And the same thing happens with TikTok. Like, you're like, wow, that's a big house. Is that actually their house? Like, this week, you know, uh, there was a lady that got in trouble because she went and posed in business class on a plane and then went back to her seat in the back. And everyone was like, what the hell's going on? But she kept sneaking into business class in order to take, you know. Uh, More pictures? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, but, but, but personality um, influencer photos of her being cool but, up there. Were there no empty seats in first class? Like, what I find amusing about this is the fact that even though class? they're lying, they're not even lying by going to the top. They're lying by <laughs> going to the middle. Like, I, I love business class. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, they don't want to brag. Yeah, no. <laughs> they're just a little bit of show off. <laughs> It's like, is it, wait, so what you're experiencing, Kyle, this fear of wanting to like expose yourself to TikTok because it makes you feel bad about your, your station in life. Is that, have we figured out why people watch our Final Fantasy streams to feel better about how good they are at Final Fantasy 14? Oh, maybe. Yeah. Like the extremes and stuff. I think yeah. there's an element of that. Yeah. We brought this, this poor other, uh, uh, YouTuber in our dungeon with us for the five, three stream. And that, that poor sucker had to, had to suffer through like four <laughs> wipes on the final boss. That, 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 uh -huh. that, that's podcast content right there. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah save okay, that. All right. Save that for all the record. Right. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> <sighs> Hi, Chad. How are we all doing today? Welcome to the pre-show. Jesse's here. We made it. We're all here. I have a sweaty day. What do you mean you had a sweaty day? As in like like gamer sweaty? Like like I, I was I was sweaty. I had a lot I had a lot to do this morning, you know. I had to go to the doctor and then you get there and they're like, Oh, we need your blood, um, but we can't take it for two hours. And I'm like, Well, that's just enough time to be inconvenient and not go home. So <laughs> yeah, I had to kill two hours out among people today. I like I can't remember the last time I had to like entertain myself alone for two hours. Not at home. It was weird. Also, how do you feel about sleep? Because if I had two hours to kill anywhere, I just. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. And I wouldn't care. People, I don't know. It doesn't matter what's going on around me. There could be, it could be crazy. And I'd just be like, hmm. That's the position. And that'd be it. Yeah. I yeah. can't, I, I, I can't do it. Uh, uh, what I left out of this story is my, uh, Biggest fear in this world is uh, having my blood drawn. So I was feeling a little anxious. I was feeling a little anxious. I'm sitting there. Why is why shaking. is it your biggest fear? Is it because the needle or the pain or the blood? All of it. All of the above. All of the above. Wow. All of the above. What I don't need a therapist injections? for this. Uh, uh, still fearful. Not as bad as blood drawn. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I guess you just have to like constantly be hurt as a kid and you get over that stuff real quick. Uh, that was, I think that's where it came from. I used to, I have to get, I had to get a lot of shots as a kid. I would get strep constantly and that was before they had pills for it. So it was a big old shot in the booty. 
uh, and then I spent some time in the hospital as a kid and I had to get an IV and they kept screwing it up. I had, they like, they stuck me like six times before they found a, a vein and I still remember being a little kid and that happening. So yeah, I was don't need a just, therapist for this. I know exactly where that fear came from. <laughs> yeah. I was just talking about this the other day where I had the exact same thing where they couldn't find a vein. And then someone was like, Oh, that's not a problem anymore. I'm like, what do you mean? They use like a light to detect the veins in your arm now. But they, they don't do that where I go. <laughs> it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. I was like, whoa, what? So there's, there's a name for it now for the folks that do. So I, I was talking to the, the lady who took my blood today. Um, and I, I forget what the name is. Cause there's a name for folks that specialize in it. Um, and she could tell I looked a little nervous. She's like, you good? I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. I'm just a little anxious about this. And she, and she's like, oh, and she's making small talk. She's like, why? I'm like, oh, I, I spent some time in a hospital as a kid and they kept missing the vein. She's like, she's like, listen, I love nurses, but that's not what they specialize in. They got to do a lot of different stuff. So that happens sometimes. She's like me and everyone here. That's all we do all day is this. And she's right. Every time I go to this lab, they like knock it right out. Cool. Phlebotomist? I believe that's right. I don't know how to pronounce it. Thanks, you Baggins Wolf in the chat. Phlebotomist? Phlebotomist. That's it. Yeah, uh, phlebotomist. Uh, yeah, they, they stretch there. I was like, they what is that word? You got it. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while since I've had to like say that word, but yeah. No, they rule. Uh, shout out to the phlebotomists in the uh, lab <laughs> I go to. Dr. Vampires. Thank you, Falling Sparrow. Nailed it. Don't forget to Nailed like it. and subscribe. Your nurse. <laughs> all right shall we uh do a podcast we all good yeah let's do it we all good to go yeah, yeah. wonderful i see that gg logo so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do oh, it oh do you have the do you have the thing the top of the show thing i got the top of the show uh, thing you got the top of the show thing we got a clip all right, all right we got a we got a clip and just like last time it's probably involves jesse but we didn't warn him ahead of time so <laughs> oh no <laughs> Grinding Your Podcast, episode 39, records live in three, two, one. Oh, this is kind of interesting. And then you play a little bit longer and you're like, oh, do I like this? And then you play a little bit longer and you're like, I think this is really good. Play a little bit longer and you're like, I really enjoy this. This is a great game. And then you play a little longer. And then break your heart. Let's grind through the end of the week. It's the Grinding Gear Podcast. <laughs> Great clip selection today, Kyle. Easy Good to work. find. Easy to find. Oh, oh is it? Yeah. Is it easy to find? Top shorts on the Final Fantasy YouTuber. -y. <laughs> 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 that voice is Kyle. This voice is Garrett. This is the Grinding Gear Podcast. And we're chilling here with Jesse Cox making a return to the program kyle is this our first return guest oh on this yeah yeah on this uh i think this is our this first edition return guest. of the show yeah the... welcome back welcome back yeah J jesse you're the, you, you the first and uh two-time guest on the program <laughs> i'm two-timing damn uh, I, I mean <laughs> the, when you say it like that it sounds like i was insulting you but <laughs> here we here we find ourselves yeah <laughs> the, i'm excited because i need you to figure out where do you stand in my intro? Are you at break your heart yet? I don't know. We'll mm. never know. Oh, yeah. Where were you? Oh, yeah. When was that produced? Yeah, yeah. It's a, a spoiler free short with a. Where with a were you out. in that mm. short? Is the question. Oh, I had beaten everything. Oh, I was, okay. I was caught to date. But, but so everything you had, keeps you had, advancing. You had, you had walked the end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. When did right. you make the one year versus 15 years video? When when was oh that? Oh my god, 2021 maybe? Cuz I remember I remember I watched it before I was playing and I was like, what the hell is that even galleon thing? What the And we just did that like 2 weeks ago. We did uh, Ruby Weapon. And I was like, oh, that thing's awesome. Why is it what's it why is it in a, a video game? How how does that work? And then I saw the sniper rifle bit, you know, on some clip and Asmogol was playing robot uh, Alexander. So it all kind of made this bizarre cornucopia. Well, I'm like getting in a realm of born and being like, does this game ever actually go there? 
What the hell? Yeah, is mean, going on? yeah. Meanwhile, I I was trying my free trial and I loaded into Gridania and I uninstalled the game the same day. Uh, and uh, it took a full year of uh, my friend bothering me to give it another shot before me and the internet. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of those things that uh, I'm hoping that in whatever happens at FanFest, they will say, and now introducing a brand new starting area. Because oh. I feel like this game needs that tremendously. Mm. Just because the experience you had, the experience I had, the experience most people I know have is going in, they see all the hype, all the things we're about to talk about today, and then they have to start in a Realm Reborn, and it's like... <sighs> Enjoy 40 hours of being kind of let down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and uh, so if you haven't picked up on this already, folks, we're probably just going to talk about Final Fantasy today. It's going to be like a Final Fantasy special. Uh, very similar to last time you were on, Jesse. We're going to we're just going to talk a lot of Final Fantasy 14. Cool. Um, and uh, so that's kind of a warning for the folks that come by ex expecting the all around the world of video game talk that we usually do here. And now here's a warning for Final Fantasy 14 players. Um, uh, we just finished Shadowbringers 5.3. So if you haven't gotten up to that point, we're going to spoil the shit out of it. So, you know, free flow uh, spoilers. Uh, no particular order. Yeah, don't run away, but maybe save it for later if you're not there yet. There we go. Yeah, you, know, you do that. You do what you guys have Warhammer talk. Hold on real quick. Time out. You want to Warhammer time out? You your do, factions. You want to do Warhammer? Uh, I just got into it. Like, I literally saw 10th edition right, coming. Based on just getting in, what's your fact? First off, Warhammer or 40K? I'm doing 40K because the 10th edition well, okay. thing got me. Started. I'm actually a little curious. Uh, based on like the three times we've talked, what faction do you think Kyle's playing in 40K? Oh, interesting. In 40K? Uh, man. I want to say Kyle is probably. Uh, you're not cool enough for chaos. I mean, obviously. <laughs> so true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I don't. I I, I feel like I I want to believe you won't play it safe and you aren't going uh, Imperium of Man. I have to believe that you're you're not going safe. So I think you're either. What's the is it is it is it Necrons in space? Is it uh, Necrons or uh ah uh, man? It, I is it orcs? Are you playing orcs right now? Now you got what first is your guess? vibe? Necron, yeah, go in the Necron. Love They're cool. Them. Yeah, yeah, uh, I get it. The Tomb Kings, you know, you gotta have some space Tomb Kings. I just, I just got this. So I saw the 10th edition coming out. It was like the StarCraft box, basically. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my, oh, oh no. Like my nostalgia is, is uh, Tyranids versus Marines. Oh, I need this. And and so I, I got a little excited and I jumped on a little 9th edition this past week. Been, uh, been building and getting into did it. you That's get awesome. the did you get the set i can't really see it because of the crop yeah yeah no i, well, I got a it, it's a recruitment set so it was like it was 50 bucks i i they actually have oh, like okay. they have warhammer stores like lego stores they're just they just exist where you know mr i uh mr i hate humans i'll uh i'll take those marines off your hands oh no the, uh, Kristen, uh, Kristen's uh, taking them yeah are Kristen's, you oh okay she's going blood okay. angel are you marines uh so neither of us have ever actually played uh but i have painted I, neither have i i have painted. I've never <laughs> play i've only painted or played total war warhammer or or like yeah dark tide i've never played any like i don't <laughs> play actual game total war warhammer actually has some decent information like you'll kind of know the chaos gods a little bit you'll kind of know like charge and bonuses exist and Mm -hmm. things like my that. the most fun i've ever had painting warhammer uh and so the the, the only thing that has influenced what i like in uh, 40k is my joy of painting it so uh my favorite is plague marines they are so much freaking fun to paint i love it i love the mix of doing hard you know metal armored edges and then suddenly there's some uh, organic biomass i gotta gotta change up my 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 method on that's all well and good but can i tell you about the cost effectiveness of chaos not only will it corrupt your soul <laughs> but it'll also save you a buck because chaos works in both 40k and normal mode that it's the true. exact same thing and many chaos units come with like um one of them i'm trying to think which one one of the big demons his stand 
you can replace either the dead in like 40k version or the normal warhammer version of like a dead soldier and you can swap them out depending on what you're playing and i'm just letting you know okay that's good stuff right there i saw a box on uh on amazon 340 skulls <laughs> so i'm just gonna fill nice. my base with skulls nothing but skulls for the skull throne you know like i'm i'm digging it <laughs> no, it, was, it was insane like I, you know I, you go to like a lego store and you're like is all you have is legos it was it was that with warhammer and it was crazy mm -hmm. because there was like no pressure or you know you know like when you're in like a, a hobby store but it's kind of like geared towards like model planes and you go for the magic cards and the guy at the front is like Ugh. <laughs> and kind of gives you that look like i was nervous about having that go into a, a like a general hobby store but this was nothing but warhammer it was really cool yeah i think they're just happy people care yeah <laughs> <laughs> and one sale probably keeps that store afloat for like two weeks because that it's expensive yeah. hobby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not painting. I, I did. The dude was great. He was like, are you looking to play or paint? And I was like, I just want to learn how to play. And he's like, okay, this and leave go before you get overwhelmed. Just get out of my store. Here you go. Here's your little bag. And anyway, yeah. <laughs> Did, did a good job. Did a good like job. First time I ever, I ever bought an entire magic box. Because I had never done it before, so I was like, "Do you have like a whole whole box I can buy?" And they were like, "Are you kidding me? We would be happy to sell you an entire <laughs> box of Magic the Gathering cards." Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh, that was a good time. The, the, just the constant serotonin hit of cracking a pack just for hours. Oh, on I hate that phrase. Oh, so so disrespectful. <laughs> Yeah, cracking a pack. Yeah, I gotta crack some packs. Like crack a pack. It, like, what do you what do you call it? it you open Filling them with my and, plastic and you, sleeve. And you what? go from front to back with respect for the cards. Cracking the pack is like not when you not when you buy a whole box. You're gonna be there all day. The only thing slower is opening anything in Hearthstone. Yeah, a cracking pack like that. It's literally like the flicking the cigarette onto the gasoline. Like that's kind of the idea you're going through. There's no reverence. You're gonna open it up backwards. You're gonna flip open your rare and then like throw the rest away because you have. You, you need to get in touch with your inner goblin mode. Is what I'm hearing, Kyle. I, you you you're over there like mm, I crack my pack with dignity. Well, yeah. Slowly and gently. Get down here in the on. mud with the rest of us absolute freaks. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the candle thing I've talked about, right? You, you get set up. You make the calm environment. You put on the music. It's all, it's all about ambiance. Ambiance. It's true. So let's talk about the ambiance <laughs> of... <laughs> Of of uh, the greatest MMO expansion I've ever played. Oh, oh wow, going right for it. Yeah, just going right for the for, probably, probably. We'll see how it all shakes out. And Walker may, you know, may win out. I may become overly nostalgic for Heaven's Ward by the end of this. But right now, right now, I'm gonna be honest. I kind of just want to take a nap because I'm so emotionally overwhelmed by the experience I just went on. Uh, as I've said in a couple different places, I am experiencing uh, what I can best describe as uh, end of book sadness. Mm. Um, even though I know I can continue, I can jump right back in, and there's still plenty of story ahead of me. I I'm not ready to experience it. I don't want to jump right in. I kind of want to digest what I just experienced because uh, if for some reason you don't follow us in other outlets, Kyle and I. Just finished uh, Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers 5.3, which, if you know anything about how F Final Fantasy does their patches, is basically the end of the expansion. Like, the is starting with point four patches, that usually starts to tee up what comes next. Before everything goes wrong again. Yeah. Yeah. Or in this case, uh, it already went wrong because they shoved an Asian in the body of the biggest asshole in the entire game. Yeah. It's yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe we'll see. Seems a yeah. seems a little uh, uh, like a, the drama kid that just discovered weed. <laughs> I can't. I can't, and I won't talk about it. <laughs> just know that it's Final Fantasy, so you'll get answers to everything that you have questions about. Mm. But I got. Uh, I can't talk about it. I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> Haven't heard of him before. No idea. You don't know who Fandango yeah, is. Old, old Fan Daniel. No, nope, don't know that guy. Is, that guy is N Walker business that's that's not so, us today when we last had you on were we like right before 5.0 or did we just finish 5.0 what was the, what was the no, we talked now? about the end of stormblood 
Yeah. Yeah, we were. It was before 5.0. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we got we got some distance. Some things have happened mm-hmm. since then. Yeah, I've been se- I've been following. I was about to say secretly following, but that's a lie. I'm like, <laughs> hey, you guys streaming today? <laughs> Speaking of, uh, let's get straight to the, the big question in the room. Am I the person you have res the most? And uh, how shameful should I feel? Uh, no, okay. I uh, probably... <laughs> there are many clips of me dying ridiculously out there uh, on all sorts of fights. So trust me, if anything, I'm paying it forward <laughs> because, <laughs> oh my God, I am not great at some of the more difficult fights in this game. Especially when the... the Ultimates, if you guys do those, good luck. We've been told. Eventually. We've been told. Yeah. Ooh, they're rough. They are. Imagine not just memorizing, but also like doing it for eight, nine minutes of a fight, sometimes 15. Just a long, just slog of, okay, stand here, do this, move here, hit this, press this. Oh, this is a knockback, so you gotta press this thing. It's just like, it all has to click, and if you forget one, well, you've killed everyone. It's like, oh, 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 all right. Yeah, oh, it's rough. Sometimes, oofers. Yeah, sometimes the difficulty isn't the mechanics, it's the longevity of which you must perform them. Yeah. And that's, I mean, there's, there's one, uh, I mean, even in extreme fights, there's one that I think anyone, I'm not going to spoil it, what it is, but in Endwalker, there's an extreme fight that I think everyone can relate to. It's very orange, and it is one of the <laughs> hardest things I've ever done in this game, period. It is a hell battle. And it's like, stand here, find your partner, do this thing. If you don't stay with your partner, you've killed everyone. Oh, oh now there's another thing. Okay, move to the side, move to the center. It's just like. Ah, it doesn't end. So it's just oh, it's uh, the worst. You're describing like uh, yeah, a marathon. Like it's the it's not the memorization that kills you. It's how long you have to be on point with that memorization. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And and sometimes you hit it, and the zone is absolutely correct. And it can even be just when you're talking with your friends and you're playing and you're in it and it's fine. But the minute you think like, oh, yeah, I'm in this fight. What's my next move? You're done. You've, you're you like not in the flow anymore. You've already screwed yourself. It's yeah, it's interesting. So you've got that to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> I, we're we're both. Uh, uh, I'm just going to speak for you, Kyle. We're both so impressed with extremes. Like we're I think we both think it's a really like perfect difficulty level for the most part i mean certain extremes are significantly harder than others um but in terms of our journey with this game where almost all of it's been public like it's very rare we play final fantasy 14 off stream like it's such extremes are dialed in at such a good level for being legitimately difficult but usually still clearable in a single stream um and it's just we have so much damn fun with them uh, and it's really brought me and it's something I wasn't expecting going in. Like uh, once I once I got in and folks were aware and I started kind of taking in outside thoughts about Final Fantasy 14. I was like, OK, this is a story game. Everyone's here for the story. And I stopped thinking about it like an MMO as someone who loved WoW and played a crap ton of it. Like, but I stopped thinking of Final Fantasy 14 that way. And then when we realized that there were things like min eye level and the ability to turn off the echo that you could like micromanage your boss experience, they were like, well, wait, we don't have to wait till end game to try difficult boss content. And mm-hmm. so we, we started doing extremes along the way. It was like, oh, shit, not only does this game also have a really good story that I'm enjoying playing through, but it's also got some of the best boss content I've experienced in an MMO, which is what really kept me around in world of warcraft i, I showed up because i wanted to see the end of the arthas story because i was a big warcraft 3 nerd but then i i got into the the end game crack that is pushing grades in world of warcraft yeah and i think that's i mean for me as well that's why i stuck around uh but also it's grading as hell that in between every boss and wow is like 80 packs of trash and you're just like i just want to fight the boss i yeah. just want to fight and i think final fantasy somewhere along the line had the smart idea of just like what if it was only bosses 
I, and it I, works for nice. me. I'm here for yeah. it. I, same, same. And like I, when I when I talk to folks who are a little standoffish of Final Fantasy 14, they're like, ah, oh, it takes it just takes so long to get through a story, and there's a lot of reading. And like, while that's true, I'm like, yeah, but if you have you played other MMOs when it comes to doing the 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 battle content, the boss content, because damn, does the game respect your time? Mm-hmm. I think. Uh, maybe okay, maybe not Eva Lee's. The the onboarding for Eva Lee's was a little absurd, uh, but. It's still worth it. It's still worth it for it, do the raid. The raid's amazing. The the story is nonsense, but the raid's amazing. I I got a question because in your earlier point or maybe maybe it was pre show maybe we were at the top of the show I don't remember. Um, you you mentioned like you'd love a new zone to open up and and for them mm-hmm. to be like, hey, brand new starting area. This is going to be a crafted N Walker Shadowbringers level experience. Go for it. Is that the strategy you'd like to see them go for? Like that that that's more of like that we made an island wow kind of catch up mechanic or the boat thing they do at every expansion. Yeah, I mean, I I personally think that having the option available of like if you want to start from the beginning a realm reborn exists, go nuts. But if you want to have your catch up and start with everyone else, and you don't have to experience the whole story because we're getting a new tale. Like, uh, you know, it's, this isn't a spoiler for you. 6.0 is like it for this story. Right. And yeah, so we've heard, we've heard that before. Yeah. And so everything that comes after that is like, Hey, we're going to tell something new, whatever that new thing is. Hopefully we'll find out in July a little bit more, but whatever that is, um, it still takes place with, you know, this world. So there has to be some sort of in for people to be a part of it right and i don't know a realm reborn through n walker is hundreds of hours of content and i don't think that's respects you know uh, yoshi p and um pretty much all the team constantly say the game is about respecting your time and i don't think that respects anyone's time that's like hey if you want to get in on this game (laughs) <laughs> enjoy which is insane and so i think having a starting area and it could be anything it could be some sort of version where it quick levels you or it could be some sort of thing where you start off at 90 and then you do a little like scenario thing and then brings you in like oh you're a brand new adventurer who's very strong for some awkward reason and it, like it, <laughs> that's for them to figure out but they, i think yeah. concept wise there should be something there that just saves people time and lets them catch up to their friends. Because again, like we were saying at the beginning, we're going to sit here and be like, yo, so in 5.3, this totally awesome thing happens. And it's like, you're not going to see it though. And you have to slog through a lot of stuff that you're going to think is real boring, <laughs> but Hey, eventually it gets good. And it's a yeah, tough sell. It's- yeah, yeah, we, we've talked about it uh, with Joe Cat. We talked about how it's like it's like trying to recommend like the thickest novel you love to a friend. And it's just like, I don't know what to tell you. Like if I if if I tell you there's like a scene where this character called Dulia touches, touches Alphano on the face and calls him my gentle artist. And it like ended my soul inside it, it, without all the context that came before it. That's that's pointless. Like it doesn't mm-hmm. doesn't matter. I can tell you like we could go with something more traditionally awesome, which is like this is you fight this dragon named Nidhogg at the end of Heaven's Ward and it's amazing. It's like, and everyone else is just going to be like, well, okay, it's a dragon. I've seen dragons before. What's so cool about it? Like, no, you don't know. You don't understand the journey to get there. And it's, it's, it is, um, it, it, like I get it now. And it's funny because I think back to when Kyle originally was like, hey man, you should, you, you should try Final Fantasy 14. I'm in there and I'm having a good time. Um, and I was like, dude, I, I uh, don't know if I can do another MMO and I didn't grow up with Final Fantasy. Yeah, I played 10, I played 10 too. I didn't beat either, but I, I liked them enough. And you know, this is the early stages of me not finishing games, but like it wasn't a staple of my childhood. So it's just like, ah, I don't know, Final Fantasy. It's like, I, I like, I like big shouldered eighties art looking shit in my games. Like yeah, I'm here for Warcraft, Warhammer, that kind of stuff. Um, and now I look back on it. I'm like, yeah, this is like, like Kyle was struggling the the same way we have our buddy john who was actually in endgame at the time was struggling where it's just like how do you how do you sell this to somebody other than just like trust me uh trust how i'm vibrating this is a journey worth going on it just doesn't feel like it when you start right it, uh, I, I have frequently 
played with many friends who get roughly to the end of 2.0 and are burnt out. And I'm like, no, just keep going. Just keep, you're almost there. It almost gets, just keep going. And I think because for the vast majority of them, they don't have like a stream or an audience that's into it, or they don't, you know, they're just like in their free time playing and it, it, there isn't really any hooks happening. There's nothing to keep you going forward. A lot of it, especially 2.1 to 2.5 is just running back and forth and doing a whole lot of nothing. And it's tough to get people to stick around. And I saw a comment that was like, isn't there something right now where you can just pay to move past all that? Absolutely. The problem is, is this game is very story heavy. And as you discovered in 5.3, things that happen in 2.1 affect the yeah. ending of the game. So you can't, if you skip it, you miss the whole point. And now you're just not invested in the characters and you're going to miss story beats. And so what is even the point of playing a story heavy MMO that is, again, just like look at what 5.3 was. It took you um, nine hours to do 5.3. Yeah. And it consisted of roughly one dungeon one solo battle and one raid everything else was story that's like i'm gonna say six hours of story and the re like the rest was a battle or a wipe I, I mean you gotta if you have no context for that story you're just like next next skip <laughs> next skip because why would you care it's so much time well, and yeah. it's, I mean, just a flatter, we can call it smart, but it it references itself, right? Like, you know, a little bit walks yeah. past Grahati and brrr, launches him with Shadow. And you're like, well, even if even if you played all of Realm Reborn, you might be like, well, what the hell was that? <laughs> but it goes back to this obscure scene now, way back in a Realm Reborn patch content of him walking past Minfilia. And you're like, oh, what was it? Was that a temper laser? Or are we getting all like, well, pieces are coming together. And I remember... I was talking with the main buddy that was trying to sell me on the game and Garrett. And I was like, dude, it was so great. I fell asleep in Sestasha last night and I got three commends at the end. Uh, it was so chill. Like I basically sit down. I'm in the free trial. There's no rush. There's no money. I pick it up. I put it down. I'm reading at night. It's not, it's super chill. I got like the baby sleeping on me. I'm just, and I passed out in the middle of Sestasha. Dad tired. They beat the boss around me, and I was healing, and I walked away with three commands. It was so ch everyone was so positive, and he's like, "Well, that doesn't sound like any fun. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a game that's worth playing, dude." <laughs> you dude, yeah, yeah, it, because we didn't stream Realm Reborn, and I'm, I think, I'm pretty glad we didn't, because I probably would have talked shit and uh, oh, gotten into internet fights. We would have um, trashed on Alphano <laughs> through all that, through all the ice heart buildup, like Alphano. Oh, dude, I couldn't. And I did not like Alphano at all, and uh, and then he probably had one. I to me one of the most effective scenes here at the end of at the end of Shadowbringers. Um, it's a character I've really come around on. Um, but yeah, like, but, but I ended up because we played it off stream. It was just this thing I came to. I treated it very much like when I read books, like because I'm the slowest reader on earth. I don't read a lot. I hated reading as a kid. I didn't start like reading for fun until I was in my like late twenties, and so it's still a rare thing. I do, but I do it. But I I get through like two books a year. It's slow as shit, and so I was just I'd sit down. It was like a calm Sunday thing. I'd fire up Realm Reborn and just slowly meander through the story. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, make little notes because we we started making videos, but we weren't we weren't streaming it. And uh, I think I think it's a good way to do it. But again, how do I how do I like? Oh yeah, just just relax with this. And you know, all my friends are my age. At this point, we're like, if I'm gonna relax, we're, we're gonna go to the beach or I'm gonna go to a park. <laughs> like, gonna sit down with a game. But um, yeah, yeah it's just just a, it's a difficult. Like I, I've been trying to sell my wife Katie on it. It's just it's 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 tough. It's tough. It's uh, it's it's off to a rough start. Don't worry. Uh, every sing for the last two, three years, every single person I've gone on a date with, I got to tell her like, so there's this thing I do. I'm a big fan of it. And, uh, you know, it's very like, I don't know how to explain this to you without me seeming like a crazy person. So this is, yeah, don't worry. It's, it's always going to be tough to be like, yeah, there's this amazing game that I play. You'll probably hate it. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a rough sell. Because it's yep. always like, oh my God, that sounds like so much fun. I'd love to play with you. And it's like, I don't want to get into this where I like spend two weeks while you 
goof around in Gridania and I'm like really trying to like help you get through it. And then you quit. And then I'm not saying it's related, but for some reason, then we break up. I don't know, you know, like <laughs> no judgments. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like, I don't make, don't make, don't, don't make me believe. So if I believe yeah. you're going to stick with it and then you don't, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt me. I mean, I'm, I'm really in this mindset recently because of the games I'm consuming. Like right now, last night I was playing Darkest Dungeon 2. And that is so wildly different from one. So I had to kind of pick up my brain and just like eject it into the void so it wouldn't think about Darkest Dungeon 1. And I'm doing that right now with with uh, the Zelda that comes out tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, mm. it's not like Elden Ring, but like also no one rips off their arm and bleeds everywhere so I can play it in the living room in front of the kids. Okay, okay, I'm watching the, the guy get on the bus and go to the, the, the work and he comes home and he's sad, but he gets to play Zelda. And I'm like, all right, you know, okay, maybe maybe this is something I would be into. And I find myself doing that similarly with Realm Reborn, like it's becoming romanticized. I'm like, oh, but but there's all those bits and pieces. There's all the little, little nods, the characterization. Everyone's in their not fabulous outfits. It's kind of cute and quaint. Especially with the way the uh, the cutscenes really up in quality as you go along. Even yeah. freaking 5.3, it just a uh, noticeable jump from 5.2. That stuff gets... Crispy. Yeah, I mean, 5.3, one of the first things I, of course, think of is uh, that was, what, two years ago? A little more than that, maybe, that that came out? 20, it came out at the end of 2020. Yeah, because I, I remember... Cause, uh, I, I, was, the whole thing was there was a big wait, because 5.2 dropped, like, right before lockdown 2020. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and so, then there was a long, longer wait than usual for 5.3. For and we were, you know, I was in there, I, I'd watched your video of the 15 years, I had digested some streams, so my YouTube was starting to be like, are you into, you know, do you like Final Fantasy? And of course, I was just completely overtaken by Shadowlands, the crystal is the same as the Jailer's crystal, and I'm like, I don't need, I'm not playing Shadowlands, I don't, I don't know what this is, so I'm just not gonna watch it, but it's funny to be catching up to that moment. Y you live through it, Jesse, what, what, is there a comparison between the Jailer and the crystal? Did that actually happen? Is that... Is that a thing? Uh, I have a video comparing the jailer to something. No spoilers. Don't watch it, you okay. two. Okay. Don't watch it for at least another, I don't know, six months. Don't. Sounds <laughs> accurate. By July. Sounds accurate. You know, however long it takes you to, you know, like, don't watch it. But I have a video talking about the jailer compared to something else that exists. Okay. But, um, okay. But yeah, I, uh, I was playing, I think I was in Heaven's Ward at the time. It was right around the time that Shadowbringers was out. I played, a, or not Shadowbringers, Shadowlands was out. I played a little bit, and when I hit max level, immediately checked out. I was just like, nah, this ain't for me. I don't want to have to grind stuff. And so I downloaded, like, Guild Wars 2 again, and I even re-downloaded Star Wars Old Republic just to see if sure. there was anything else I could catch up on and play. But Star Wars, bless that game, it looks aged. Uh, some of the mechanics are kind of like, a little jank but i was like okay i'll give it a shot guild wars still super fun i was kind of into it but uh yeah a friend at the time was like hey have you ever played final fantasy 14 i was like oh yeah i think i got to like level 40 and quit and they were like you should you should try it again apparently this next patch coming out is introducing flying into all the realm reborn stuff and i was like Okay, so once I heard that and I heard it would be easier to get around, I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. So I started playing. I got to Heaven's Ward uh, where flying was introduced and then immediately they released 5.3 and I was like, oh, all right, I guess I'll go fly around. And so I did like a crazy person. I leveled up all the different jobs that I had uh, in order to like see new content and I could fly around and just like do stuff easy. And because I was already over level for everything, it was just, I, my maps are clear. I'm gonna let everyone know. <laughs> my maps are clear. The entirety of everything is clear. I got no exclamation points. Mm. I got no quests. Oh my I have God. no uh, card battles wow. of it. Cleared it. You, oh, even yeah. the Azaslaw one, the, the guy up on the edge there, he takes forever. F that dude. The only cards I don't have <laughs> are there's, <laughs> There's one person, and I'm not going to name names, but uh, chat will know. It's a cheating, cheating little creep, and I cannot beat them to save my life. 
I can't do it. They actively cheat. It is the worst <laughs> thing. I hate that guy. No, that guy is the worst. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the only thing I don't have. And I, it's great. I, I absolutely wanted to go back through and seeing. So the, I don't know when they introduced it. I think it happened in Stormblood, but it might be a little bit in Heaven's War too. But there are these things where in every zone, if you do all the quests, you'll find that there's usually two big quest chains. And it's like quest chain one, for example, involves like an explorer who's looking for, I don't know, like a lost artifact. And quest big quest chain two is like um, this warrior who's like a drunk and he, you know, this is all just stuff I'm making up. Like he's like a drunk and he's <laughs> lost his way. And then when you beat both of those and you do everything else, at the end, both those quest chains come together and it's like the warrior is going to help the archaeologist discover the thing. And like, and you get like a complete story for the zone. And that is all through Stormblood and uh, Shadowbringers and Endwalker. I don't remember if it's for Evans Ward, but I know it's not for Rum Reborn. But I love that they added that. So if you do have the audacity to sit there and do every single quest, you'll get a payoff. It's, it's pretty neat. That is wild. So you just like you played it in secret, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm scrolling through your old videos of two years yeah. ago, and I it, it, it's all quiet on the Final Fantasy 14 front until you sort of <laughs> make your break on the scene of like being. Hey, listen, everybody, listen, I, I got something to tell y'all. <laughs> well, so I stream, I streamed it a bunch, okay. and then I saved the vods elsewhere. But yeah, I didn't just like you. I didn't upload any video content or anything till. I think either 2.55 or Heaven's Ward. Like it was, it was after I beat base 2.0. So I, like most people just sat there and tried it. Cause I'll be honest. I didn't think I was going to like it or continue to play it. I did it for a friend. Cause I was like extremely bored. It was peak COVID. I was going nowhere. Nothing was happening. It was the times when like, if you wanted toilet paper, you got to get some, like some sort of like, tissue roll <laughs> you know like paper towel Back alley hookup yeah yeah it was it was a <laughs> crazy time and so i was just like yeah i'll give it a shot and then i realized oh i love this and then i realized i was spending more time doing that than i was streaming stuff i was like oh i should probably string this and so that's what i started <laughs> doing and the rest is history yeah that's rad <sighs> yeah it's 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 interesting how similar that is because, yeah, like, Kyle, do you even remember what the hell it was like when we started making videos? Because, like, to me, I don't even, it, it feels like a million years ago, and it was it was less than two years ago. Yeah, yeah, we, we, right. We just did, like, a check-in, because I think you made it to the, the Raban arm cutting off, and and I knew that was, like, a, a ooh, oh, because you, you, you like the premiere television. You like, a, you know, the Game of Thrones and stuff. So we made a little video. I was kind of asking about that. I, I liked Game of Thrones. I liked. Uh, it's very important oh, yeah, that you, allow you, me to, you past yeah. tense that. Yes, yeah, please. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like House of the Dragon when I can see what's going on in the episode. Uh, it's, it's off to an OK start. Oh. It needs to be as dark as possible for me. I I exist <laughs> in theater of the mind for scenes <laughs> when a dragon's on screen. I just want to, like, think about what it may look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, exactly. You know, sometimes it works. Actually, I mean, that's true. It's true. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going back through because like, I legitimately don't remember where the hell we started uh yes it was a, a video lovingly titled recovering wow podcaster tries weep game uh that was our first final fantasy 14 video and i don't remember how far into realm reborn we were I at see, the time yeah i, I see the, the the preview images of the void scent dude coming out of the ground there with your one of your first black mask Asian fights yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which, by the way, I love the conversation the two of you had. It might have been the video or it might have been on the stream. I'm not sure. Just about like, all right, what are the, what's going on? We got the black, black mask Asians. We got the red mask. Like, what's the deal here? Who's who? I love the deep dive on that because it's just like, yeah, no, it is confusing, but I think I figured it out and I'm very pleased with myself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wish I knew which video that was. Hey, yeah. Oh, no, it might have been it might have been literally the last video you did where you were going over 5.3, where you were talking about the masks. And uh, uh, again, it could have been the stream too. I have a <laughs> let me just say, 
I've watched every Final Fantasy 14 video and all of yours. So I got, <laughs> it's all up here. But uh, I did figure this out. It took me a while and this is my wacky theory and I could be proven incorrect, but I think I'm right. The very first black masked Asian that we see, his mask is uh, like a full mask, but the top part is uh, La Habrea's mask. It's it's still got the fangs, but there's a bottom like chin right addition. And then the other ones, I think each red mask gives them like the black mask is a full thing with the symbol still in it, so you know which one they kind of like belong to. Okay, that's cool. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, like your minions. I think that, that's my that, guess. That's, that's cute because they because in five three. When they talk about black mass asking asking showing up on the first, we don't actually see them. We're just told they're there, and then Thancred f's off to go murder them and comes back, and so we never even see one. But because that would have made it easier to confirm your theory, because if they all had like a little bit mass. I wonder if anyone has that shot out there of uh, Gaius's belt when he has all the masks there what the black ones look like. Although they may have only ever designed and mocked up the ones that La Habrea had, you know what I mean? Like they may only have the one asset. So, but I, I definitely think that that's part of it too, is uh, that little kind of like back in a rum born, you thought the black mass Asians were going to be like a thing. Nah, they, they get like, everyone kicks their ass so easily. They're just not even put in the game anymore it's like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're level 30 those guys were tough but whatever the game moved on it, you know it escalates yeah. and, it, and it, it respects its own escalation like it doesn't go back to it and we, we, i think we brought that up in the video i was like wait why are we bringing up black mass asians again they're like chumps and they were chumps like thinker comes back and was like that wasn't hard at all well we do have oh. like we got three fangs three fanged ones so no full like the, the first one you meet is out there for me, it was a Nulda, but he had the full chin. You know, it was a full circular right. face mask, which these don't appear to be. These are all fanged. And then we got a very, like, panthery kind of one. And then this this cracked boy on top, which, yeah, I'm, I'm still curious. Like, you know, when we did the video this week, and you're like, any questions, Gary? I'm like, I mean, this is one of them. Like, I, I still want to know how Gaius is going around white orosite bullets. I mean, that'd be cool. You know, you know, rip those. For sure, why not? I think he's my favorite character in the game, honestly, at this point. I just I love the guy. I'm I'm nuts for, for more Gaius action. Are you going through the um bonus content? Bonus content. The like, you know, the raids and various things, the duties. We do all we do all the raids uh and the whatever the trial content is uh patch by patch as it rolled out before we move on to the next expansion. So, so like you're tonight still in for the whole like Warlit saga right now. Yes. So, like tonight, for example, we're streaming uh, the second wing of Near. I uh, won't spoil it. Okay. Cool. Much. <laughs> much By the way, uh, what are your thoughts? Like, you did Near Raid One. Do yes. you have any context or thoughts for for that raid series? Uh, so we've both played the opening like five hours of Near Automata. So the first wing is like pretty one for one yeah. with the opening of oh, yeah. of, of Near. Um, uh, my, I, my thoughts were I was like mad impressed, like the the scope and scale of that raid. And in ways, I think it looked. I, although I was playing Near Automata on a Switch, which people give me crap for. I was on a plane. It was an impulse buy. Let let me live. Um, the uh, it looks better in Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> Like, it's more visually impressive there. Uh, and it's, I had a lot of fun with it. Like, uh, I'm, I don't have a history with Nier, but uh, the first swing of the raid is really impressive just from a scope aspect. Did you go back after you beat it? We did. Yeah, like the, the we went and entries. filled out our logs before yeah. we, for, for wing one, we went and filled out our logs before we so saw the, the room that night. The room full of bodies? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the dead body room. Get ready for more of that. <laughs> <laughs> more body. All right. What does it mean? What's it about? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. The best part, I'm not sure how much you know Yoko Taro, who is my personal game hero because he is a genuine crazy person. Um, <laughs> he, he has said numerous times, and it, is, it makes this so much more interesting if you've played Nier or you've played Nier Automata. It, it, 
He has said everything, every single thing created ever is canonical to the near story. So yes, this we've... right here is canon, and I just want you to know that's insane. He gives, <laughs> he gives me big Dungeon Master vibes, like real like local hobby shop uh, acceptance. Like you show up and you're like, hey, w- would this work in the world? Like, yeah, why not? I'll write it in. Sure. Yeah, I don't. It's, it's, it all works here. Whatever you want to bring to the all table. Right. Okay. All right, Jesse, uh, I'm going to ask you, because when I ask a stream, uh, there's a lot of different voices. Um, people have brought this up when we talk about Nier, that everything is canon. And my response is, with a game that has, like, that many different endings, how much does canon matter? Um, to give... To, 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 the near universe is based off of the goof ending of the game Dragon Guard. Yes, I'm aware of that. So just like that's the baseline. The <laughs> goof ending is the starting point for this franchise. And so when he says anything goes, and I'll give you another example, his next game, the game he's working on right now, it's like some mobile, probably a gotcha game, but the premise is in a world where evil Sega Corporation controls cities, only old Sega games personified as waifus can help you defeat evil Sega Corp. And he got Sega to pay for it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. This is the first time hearing this. This is the first time hearing this. So am I going to be able to have Sonic 2 as a waifu? I don't know the complete, but it's like Afterburner is a waifu and Virtual Fighter is a waifu. I, I, and they're just like, I can't wait for Vector Man waifu. Guns are like fists and stuff. It's crazy. What the shit? Okay. And, this is the first I'm hearing of this. That's, uh, yeah, he's, that's people have asked him like why he does this stuff. And his answers are always either like, cause I wanted to, or I, you know, I like getting paid. Like that. I'm like, <laughs> fair. This man. I respect this, both those answers. Fair? Yeah. 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 I respect Great. both those answers. Well, hot damn. Uh, we're learning stuff today. Thank you for dodging the question, by the way. Just like everyone I ask on the stream, I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. I can't spoil. I'm not going to spoil nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a well-made raid. Like, I, I love that the Alliance raids just go full chaos. Like it, And it has that, yeah. that trash you might be used to. Like, trash is a puzzle. Because why not? It's just nuts anyway. Let's just go for it. Yeah, they just did Red Chocobo dropping meteors on your ass in Ivalice. Yeah, that was, that was fun. Oh, you haven't, speaking of, you haven't done any of, um, oh, Bosja. We have. No, we have. Yeah. We started yeah. it. We started it. I really like Bosja. Uh, 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 because we also did, we did one night of Eureka. And while I think Eureka is a prettier place to hang out, um, I way prefer the mechanics of Bosja. I think Bojo's was like, just, it's just a fun, like I've played so much. Wow. I've seen so many wow variations on an end game open zone that you grind a bunch. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 and it's not me uh, just placating the final fantasy audience because with the wow versus final fantasy shit. Like I legitimately really was impressed by Bojo's mechanics. I thought it was just a fun place to hang around. Um, take that with this grain of streamer privilege because we brought a whole freaking group with us but it was fun like we had a real fun time so much so that we fired it up on our like rando tuesday streams where we don't really plan what we're doing we just kind of get in and vibe i was like hey Kyle, can we just go back to Boja? Yeah. i was having a good time so we did it's it's a blast um yeah they do a really good job of introducing fun characters and a story but also a grind and uh yeah yeah the grind eventually becomes a like a grind and it's pretty rough sure. but comparative to eureka eureka is a hellscape eureka you need a crew <laughs> you need a good solid crew willing to go with you through it because if i were to come help you i couldn't because i my level is higher and you can't it's final fantasy 11 i can't yeah. join you and help you or i will just hold you back Interesting. and so you got to like have a crew w- with you. And then should you make it through some of the most difficult zones and level up stuff, then you get to do the hardest thing in this game. And I don't care what anyone says. The, the raid at the end is one of the most difficult things I've ever played in an MMO period. 
This it is Boja or Eureka? Eureka. It is brutal. The end of Eureka is like worth the challenge. And if you win, you get Ozma as a mount. But <laughs> let me just say there are many mechanics in that raid that are just like, oh no, you lose. And you're out. Like you singularly are booted from the raid and everyone else is still in there. Oh wow. That kind of mechanic. Damn. That it happens and it is crazy. Plus I will say, shout out to the Discord community. There's a solid Discord community that handles, they, they do runs and they host runs. And when I went, I had this wonderful Australian man leading us. And so his calming voice kept me from freaking out. But it was, I was, I was clenching so hard. It was diamonds. It was the <laughs> craziest thing. Oh man, it was rough. Holy butts. Uh, how, yeah. how, how relatively friendly is it to reattempt if you, you, you crap out on it? So, oh boy, you ready for this? So in order to even get in the raid, right? You go to the last area of Eureka and in order to even get into it, you have to fight a boss that's from Final Fantasy XI. It's a big jellyfish guy. You have to fight the boss. Okay. Then when the boss dies, around the zone, portals open. And the portals only accept one person. So you and everyone else must already have a pre-made raid to go into the portals. And each person has to have a spot that they know to stand at or else someone else could take it. And right. But it's, it's 54, 54. It's a ludicrous number of people. And so every, you know, there's, it can only accept so many people and everyone has to be ready to click at the same time. And then once you do that, you go into the raid, and now once you're inside the raid, spoilers, you can't heal. What if you go in as a healer? Why would... Uh... Well, you, I mean, like, you're fine, but you, I'm sorry. I'm dumb. You can't resurrect. My bad. You oh, can heal, you oh, can't resurrect. Okay. But still. Yeah. Oh, oh, you can heal. Well, that makes that, sense if there's mechanics rest. where you fail, you yeah. get booted out. So what would be the point of resurrecting if you're getting booted right, out? Right, 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 right. Right. So. so you can't resurrect. You can heal. That would... Yeah, you're right. I'm just like, wait a minute. What did I just say? You can resurrect... Uh, wait, you can heal, but you can't resurrect. <laughs> you, you, you go in as a, you go as a, as like a scholar and you're just like, well, shit, I'm useless. Yeah, well, it's, it's still like, it's still <laughs> shocking. The resing, the combat reses are a fundamental part of what makes the game, the interesting snowball, uh, climb towards doom that it is when things go wrong. But you can also use actions in Eureka. You gain access to various actions. And so one of the actions is like a self res or, but it's something like 70% of the time. Right. So sometimes you won't res. Right. And mm -hmm. sometimes a res, you can have an action, but the res may, I'm trying to think of what it is. The mechanic may be like the person who res you dies. I don't know. What, or like it's, there's some sort of weird ass mechanic to it. And then active boss fights where the bosses will boot you from the, the raid. That kind of thing. That's insane. I mean, it's pure insanity. But like, it's good on paper like it's kind of that wow classic i played uh i played uh star wars galaxies back in the day and there was a lot of like really what we would consider antiquated things like having to take a loan from the huts in order to resurrect yourself and now you're in trouble with you know it's like on paper i'm like ooh, oh that's so hardcore that sounds but i also just like the golden saucerification of Bajia, or just goes, hey, fun all the time. I'm fun over here, fun over there. Everyone just go, go right. crazy. Yeah, I mean, that does a good job of um, giving you all the time kind of fun. The biggest problem I have with that is they include that book that has all the little scraps of information you can collect from different bosses and things. And there's still two I do not have. And the drop rate is abysmal. And it angers me to a point where I just don't want to ever go back. Cause when you get them all, you get a mount, you get the final oh, fantasy 12 mount. Oh. And I'm like, yo, I want that so badly. Nah, no, nah, I'll never get it. I, the only way I can get a for sure version of the thing I need is to do good enough that I'm then chosen to one-on-one -on -one fight a boss. And then I'm good enough to beat that one-on-one -on -one fight. Then maybe I get one scrap of paper that allows me the potential to get a like a cool looking bike. Wow. Ugh. I'm not and first off, I'm not folks in our FC were talking about uh, folks in our FC were talking about uh, the note 
uh, uh, for lack of a better word, blue balls. Uh, how they're still there's still like one or two notes that they just can't get a hold of. Meanwhile, Eureka, it's a slog, a giant pain in the ass, but I have every single thing from there. Because <laughs> you can get it. It just requires you to have the patience to sit there and be like, all right, I'm playing Final Fantasy XI again, which is what it is. And mm. as a person who played XI, <laughs> you can't go back. Like, that was right before WoW came out. God help me. There's no, like, WoW yeah, just destroyed any desire I had to, to be put in groups permanently or when I died to lose experience. Nah, I couldn't do it. It's so I remember a dude in high school like he was obsessed with 11 like every day i just sat next to him but in like art class and he just every day would talk to me about the cool shit he got up to in final fantasy 11 but i just remember every, everything coming out of his mouth just being like dude that sounds awful <laughs> like, <laughs> what you're describing sounds not fun mm. no, i just uh i don't know what the hell i was playing at the time i mean i need to uh, i remember when wow came out i was like i'm not paying monthly for a game and then i started playing guild wars one <laughs> instead <laughs> Uh, that was a bad call. The Guild Wars one was okay, but it was no wow. It was no vanilla World of Warcraft. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did the Mesmer. I liked my Mesmer. Actually, Mesmer was a fascinating. Uh, I was an idiot. I was, uh, uh, I, I went, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, the, what was the enchant? What, was that what the hell was it called? Elementalist. I was an Elementalist warrior, which was like one of the worst combos in the game. A warrior Elementalist was great because you had the armor to melee. The other way around, you were in the cloth and you just sucked. But I was like, I want a robe and a sword. That sounds awesome. It was terrible. I, I totally shot myself in the foot out the gate with that, that does, game. That doesn't kind of seem to be the chain. Like there's a lot of, if you if you mainline the MSQ, like that's your stream content. It seems like a lot of people, Preach included, go straight to Guild Wars 2 to kind of continue the, the story sort of atmosphere that they're looking for. I've never given a damn about the lore of Guild Wars. Yeah, it's not the Guild Wars lore isn't like that great. Gameplay, I love Guild Wars 2. I think it's got really fun gameplay. I love the mount system, which uh, you know, some games decide to copy. But uh yeah, I think <laughs> I, there's a lot of stuff to love about Guild Wars. I love the way they tell the story when you're moving around, people have conversations, so you don't have to like sit there and wait for things to happen. I like that, but the story is also kind of like whatever um but yeah i think preach is doing the thing that i'm sure everyone who's played final fantasy 14 noticed and i'm and i i am curious what you will do when the time comes because you've got plenty ahead of you you're fine but eventually everyone who's playing 14 hits that moment where they're caught up to content and there's nothing else to do except like grindy stuff or sidey things and the experience that I've seen is most people are like, eh, I'm doing that on my own. I don't need to watch that. And so I think in Preach's mind, he's like, oh, I'm going to go to a different story because people like to watch story mm -hmm. and reaction to story. And that keeps an audience engaged and makes more sense than, all right, it's episode six of us going back in and grinding out our new weapon. Uh, and that's just, it's, yeah, I don't know how many people want to sit there and watch that. I think that's kind of what he's doing. I don't know. Yeah, there's also I was uh, like to talk like, content shop uh, continue that talk going i was uh, like because we were still felt like strangers in a foreign land when we first started streaming final fantasy 14 and we were immediately hit by the the thing you hear a lot from people that start streaming this game which is like like damn like the the audience is like kind and mm -hmm. uh like legitimately excited to the point of like i don't know like because we kyle and i started in starcraft 2 which was an exceptionally gatekeepy uh was is the vibe i would i would describe that as and world of warcraft has a lot of, a lot of that too where people think there's a there's a right way to play the game if you don't do it right if you're not the best of the best like why are you even putting yourself out there uh whereas you get to final fantasy 14 and it like suddenly like, like i was surprised by the people like you you folks want to talk about story like holy shit like i love video game stories i'm a big nerd about it and, I, and because i covered blizzard games no one ever wanted to talk about it wow to a little bit and then but then the story started to kind of suck and wow um so that kind of fell off, uh, depending on who you are. You know, your mileage mm -hmm. may vary, but I, I wasn't the biggest mm -hmm. fan. Um, mm -hmm. But so, so like I was hit by that, that wave of like, wow, everyone's like really welcoming and I'm not getting a lot of gatekeepiness and everyone's super into this. But then you start, you start getting the, uh, we start getting the, the trend of the, oh, I'm so worried. What are you guys going to do when the MSQ is over? And I'm like, wait, what do you mean? Why are you worried? Why, why is there concern? And you start to hear like, oh yeah, yeah, no, the views just fall the hell off when you, when you finish the MSQ. So like, like I said, keeping that content shop talk going, 
I was really happy uh, when people showed up for extremes. Like when we do an extreme night, like we get a good crowd. Like it's it's yeah. totally uh, worth doing. So like to me, I'm like, well, I don't know what we do in the long, long term, but I know exactly what I'm doing the second I'm done with the MSQ is like, I got a kill list called extremes and I'm going to start <laughs> checking them off. Yeah, I think the thing that people should realize in general is just like the audience for say final fantasy 14 the game itself isn't designed to be played all the time and so like it's chill to go play other games and do other stuff and uh i think one of the biggest problems people have in the space we exist in is everyone's just like number hungry and they're like oh i gotta and it's mm -hmm. like okay just to play things for fun and do stuff on your own and uh if you're like when will i ever see the bajillions of views that i got while streaming final fantasy 14 in 7.0 you'll be fine <laughs> you know I mean? like, they'll be back they're not gonna forget you exist you know people love watching final fantasy story so just entertain yourself until then if that's you know the concern to all the streamers out there chill chill out baby it'll be fine don't worry hey I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll toot our own horn we did a here's the storm exclusive show for almost eight years i think we're pretty good <laughs> making content that game declared we are done making heroes and we went uh we're not but, but we're, we're gonna I don't keep think going any it, and also like i i don't, I don't want i don't want to be just a, uh, a final fantasy streamer too like i like other games it's a reason why this podcast usually talks about other games like uh, i played mm -hmm. a bunch of need for speed unbound this week and i had a great time like that that that's hit me right in my nfs nerd nostalgia um but uh, where the hell was I going with this? <laughs> Shit! Damn it, Kyle! Damn! But, but I lost it's healthy. It. It's it, like regardless it of the Yoshi P quote, the the number chasing, whatever it may yeah. be. Like having a proper video game diet makes you a more complete person. And mm -hmm. I love kind of filling out my. I guess you could call it like a like a what would it be? like a class system. Like you have your tank, your healer, and your DPS. Like I have a turn based game. I'm always doing. I have an MMO. I'm always doing. And then like some really dumb action game that and i'm just satisfied across the board yeah 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 i usually have a racing game i usually have some sort of card game uh snap please fix your card acquisition uh and I, I, yeah i usually have an mmo so that's that's what's going on. oh now i remember kyle what i was going to say was uh you know even though i, I like exploring other games uh, i don't think anything we we do in final fantasy 14 will feel like uh, scraping the bottom of the barrel the way it sometimes felt uh covering heroes of the storm so yeah I, yeah i guess what what the point i want to make is for people who want to stream just Final Fantasy 14 and they hit the point where they're like, no one's watching me anymore. If you like Final Fantasy 14, just stream Final Fantasy 14. Like, enjoy what you do and have fun. And if you want to do like the 15th ult like ultimate run you've done and you're just going to throw yourself into a wall for 12 hours, awesome. Do it. Have fun. Don't stress, uh, you know, just having you be a part of the community is is the fun itself. That is that is my thing to all Final Fantasy 14 streamers. Thanks for being there because I loves to watch. I'm like, oh, what are you doing today? <laughs> yeah. You hear that out there? If you're thinking about starting the Final Fantasy 14 content, you have at least one viewer and his name is Jesse Cox. Yeah, I mean, it, I can't promise I'll watch live, but I will snoop after. Trust. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of we have a we have a channel on our discord where people kind of talk about, you know, oh, so and so's getting oh, so and so like always the vault. The vault is often brought up there. It's like, oh, someone's getting to the vault. Okay, we got we got to mm -hmm. let's go stand around. Let's all dress up. We're going to be outside when they get out of the vault. And uh, I'm kind of like, oh, well, maybe I'll dress up and go to someone's vault. That sounds, that sounds kind of fun. I kind of like that idea. And then I'd see myself on the screen and I'd be like, oh, that's me up there. And oh, they're going through the vault. That's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. But I, I think one of the other things that kind of happens in, in content creation mind, it's very easy to do is be like, oh my God, a video game book club. This is awesome. Like I, I do this in chapters. We're going to divide it up. You, you come experience me. Can we apply this to other games? Mm -hmm. Not really. Like you, you can do let's plays and post them in parts, but I feel like the Final Fantasy 16 gameplay, it won't be like, Hey everybody, we're doing chapter two tonight where we go get the Phoenix kid or whatever. It just doesn't translate to other games. I wouldn't know. 
<laughs> but I do believe, you know, I, I believe the last time you were on, you were like, uh, just stream stream a new game the day it comes out and just never return to it. <laughs> it seems like, it, but so when compl- it, it drives me a little insane, you know, I've, I've got, I've got a kid, they watch, uh, you know, they watch YouTube kids at times and there's like, there's VTubers on there, which is like Combo Panda and other characters that they play just like the first 10 minutes of Luigi's Mansion. And then they go, all right, everybody, uh, if you like it, I'll see. It. And then they never do part two. It, mm-hmm. uh, living like that would drive me insane. I think <laughs> maybe. That's, I, I, agree. I mean, look, that's why somewhere out there is like episode 100 of some stupid thing I did that absolutely nobody wanted to watch but i'm like i'm doing it i don't care i'm gonna beat it but i like seeing Only that s- like it gives me comfort yeah. seeing you post your number 93 of uh, cyberpunk and i'm like oh he's still going oh good <laughs> I need resolution. yeah and it, it doesn't do me any favors it's it, it, if you're looking at it from like a uh, content creator standpoint it is not helping in any way but from a i like to play video game standpoint i want I, I want to beat it. And sometimes I can make it happen. And sometimes it's like there are 18 new games out, Jesse. And I'm like, <laughs> you hear about, so uh, you, you know, in, <laughs> I think it's like uh, traditional uh, content, like making movies and shit versus internet content. You, you hear about like people like uh, uh, Christopher Nolan is a good example. I guess he's, he talks about the one for them, one for me when he makes movies, he makes, mm-hmm. makes a crowd pleaser. Then he makes something he wants to make, he makes a, makes a Batman. Then he makes an Oppenheimer. That's a bad order. Cause they're nowhere near each other, but you get the idea. Sure. Crowd pleaser, personal project. Uh, and but uh, with the uh, internet, sometimes it's uh, it's one for them, uh, ninety nine for me that nobody watch. You know, sometimes it's just what you got to do. It's just what you yeah. got to do. You just got to get it out of your system because that's the m- m- reason most of us are doing this stuff, We're like playing games, um, and that is a time intensive experience a lot of the times. Um, and they can't all be Final Fantasy fourteen where people actually want to watch every step of the way. Speaking of uh, one for me. Hey gang! Hey guys! How's it going? What What do you think? What do you think of your uh, Shadowbringers experience? Hell what yeah. was the, Hot, what's the vibe oh, like? Yeah. Hot damn! It's nice when things live up to the hype. Is is my feeling on on Shadowbringers? I said that at the end of five zero, and I'm saying it again here at the end of five three, because um, we've been doing so much side content. It took us a little while to get to the end of five three. Um, but but yeah, like going in, like I loved Heaven's Ward. I freaking adore that expansion and i will fight you for stormblood stormblood deserves more love it is better than a lot of people give it credit for and don't come in my house with your xenos hate i i will fight you xenos rules uh everyone can't be emmet um but uh but hot damn so like i was looking at shadowbringers and all the hype and i'm like really is it really that good is it really that good also i didn't really like uh il meg uh, kind of kind of uh, reminded me of the ruby c um so i was like it can't be that oh i'm like okay all right i'm across i'm standing arms crossed at the end of Meg, being like it's not that good which angered some people who love dog memes but um yeah it uh it is that good as it turns out it is a a, a pretty freaking exceptional full product like you need realm reborn through stormblood to enjoy Shadowbringers, but uh, it, like I am so deeply satisfied with the ending of this expansion. I know there's more. I look forward to seeing where it goes, but I don't need it. I don't feel ravenously hungry to to jump headfirst into Endwalker right now. Kyle, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Oh, I mean, so. <laughs> There was a number of videos we did where I was like, are, are we an Asian? Are we the Asians, everybody? Uh, entirely based off the one animation that you kind of arrive with feathers when you die at a crystal. You kind of like oh, fold out, which is what Nabrielis did when he res like right next to himself. And I was like, oh, hold on a minute. Thank you. <laughs> you, you didn't you didn't start on that on that train until uh, uh, Gigapope. No, the, yeah, the Gigapope with the what are you made me question it, right? Like we went back. 
but the foldout was always kind of interesting. I thought it was just a graphic oh. until, and I was like, well, maybe they just like copy paste, you know, MMO creation is busy. You know, we got to keep moving. So let's just copy paste the death animation with Nebrialis. But then there was uh, like Emmett appeared next to himself pre-posed, but he climbed in a body in another room. So the whole message started getting really, really convoluted is what you could say, but they, you know, they were purposely misleading you in murky. various directions. Yeah. It got murky. On purpose though. So for me, it, 5.3 was the unnecessary sequel. It, there was a great movie. It was called 5.0 and we made another one. I'm like, well, why? It can't be good. Uh, we, cause we're, we're just mining now, but I love the SM stuff. Uh, Azim SM. Like it, and I actually got in a bit of trouble this week because people were like, oh my God, the, Kyle spent weeks, years talking about Are We The Assians and he just smiled through the Azem stuff. And like, no, that wasn't for you. I didn't need to clarify to you that I understood it. <laughs> I was smiling for me because I've been on the sure. journey here to get to this moment where that was said in little red text on the bottom of the screen with the, why are you going in the background? <laughs> I was sold. Like, uh, that's great. We did it. We made it all the way. I... What what do you think that means? I'm so curious. So first off, I completely agree with you. One of my first thoughts about when I beat 5.3 was they could have stopped here and I would have been just fine. Yeah. Like if they just shut the servers down, it wouldn't have been the complete end of the story, but it was such a satisfying conclusion to what felt like a capstone on everything we had done before that I was just like, my scions are in a good place. Everything is fine. The team's back together. We all, they're like, we got a crazy, like wacky antics moment with them. And it was a good solid. It would be like the end of a good movie. Right. And yeah, I was totally just like this. They could have stopped here, but then they were like, meanwhile, and I was like, Oh, we can't stop. <laughs> um, but I am curious based on kind of like your thoughts of the Asm stuff. Where, like, what do you understand of that? And where do you think that is going? So hmm. there's a lot of threads they could pull, of course, because we introduced a number of new powers, which are really exciting, like, you know, literally birthing pieces of primals out into the world or ejecting yourself or powering yourself up. You know, we powered ourselves up with hope and or riding a primal. Yeah, yeah. And the <laughs> like ice hard riding of a primal. Suit. Like, yeah, like we have all these options now for our primal power base. Could that crystal stuff where we were following and eventually meeting Hithlodeus, could that just turn into a Deckard Kane pick up the scrolls kind of thing, right? Like Enwak is just full of crystals laying around and they're like, oh, hero, welcome to the and you're like, oh, this is just memories, you know? Like I I don't think any job really highlighted for me as well. I haven't done them all, but uh astrologian is one of the most bizarre crystal ones because it's like you have no idea how to do anything <laughs> you are you are doing this as a paladin and now you got your job stone and now you can heal like it, those memories are directly applied to your brain whereas you know, like dragoon you have you have a big spear and now you spear better because you have a job stone and it's not as not as stark in that comparison so so you think the job stones are connected to the Asian stones I don't think directly, but I'm curious to see what they do with like crystallized memories and how they're going to play into that. Obviously, there's a huge I mean, there's definitely a there's definitely a through line. Yeah, it's the same way with Dark Knight. Uh, also, kind of hits on it when you pick it up. It's just like it's like infused with the with the memories of of the night that uh, the stone previously belonged to. So can you, can you, will we lay those out? Like, you know, are we going to get rid of our link pearl and we'll just start like crafting crystals for anybody who needs to know where we were and kind of leave it at the door. The real point that that was highlighted was they made sure when you're running to Grahati, you walked home to everybody else. Forget all the other signs. We're running to Grahati. Like we got to get him, got to get him back. And it falls out of your pocket. The game was clearly like, don't you forget that this exists and it is still on your person. It wasn't consumed in that moment they're fighting a little bit. It is something you were going to take with you. They've confirmed where we were the 14th seat. Yes. Right. Like they've confirmed that we are a, a shattered member of the convocation. Uh, I'm paralyzed by the directions they could take that. And also like the realization that most of our antagonists are 
gone. Cause wouldn't it be inter- like my brain goes to, Oh, what is it? Wouldn't it be even fun to play with the character of Emmett Selk? If with, if he had that information, maybe he already did, but like with mm-hmm. us having that information and Emmett, like it, I go to, it, to me, I'm like, w- wouldn't it be interesting if the Athens were trying to bring us over to their side? Cause they're like, Hey, you're my old buddy and I want you back because the Asian are so firmly focused on the past. They want to get that back. So wouldn't it be cool if they wanted to get us back? However, I think the Essenes that would go that route are gone. And we're left with whoever the hell this Fan Daniel is, who seems like, uh, I don't know, the Joker. <laughs> seems completely unhinged. And do you, I, I don't I don't see it going that route. I'm tr- What do you understand? I don't want to say anything. Uh, what do you understand of Asm as a role within the council? The uh, uh, basically nothing. I originally thought when we meet Hippolyteus in 5-0 and there's the talk around Amarat of a, a, a 14th seed vacating, that that was going to be us. It was going to turn out to be us, that we were the 14th seed. But then we find out someone else became the heart of Heidelin, not us. So I... I'm taking that as we were not a voice of dissent on the convocation for the summoning of Zodiac, and we were totally on board with it. Um, but I also assume we're going to explore that more because there's also a whole overarching theme in all of Final Fantasy 14 with you, the player character as the warrior of light exploring memories way before this. It's the whole point. Like it's, it's like 75% of the power of the echo is exper- is experiencing other people's memories. And now I think we're heading down the road of, actually piecing ours together from our past life as a member of the convocation. Hmm. And I thought in that moment they, we might mirror a little bit in that we were birthed, we're a primal, we were birthed from Heidelin in that intro moment, but then you wouldn't need the star shower, so that's that's kind of a whole... That's not going to happen, but there is an opportunity for a mirror of that where Heidelin ejects her own heart and is now running amok in the world. And with that, <laughs> exploration we could find more about ourselves there's this this bizarre scene in a realm reborn where you give uh sid his goggle but you like fly in space towards him as a spirit and he's like ah yes i remember you and i don't know if that's like a 1.0 nod or what the hell that was about you know are we (laughs) are we a spirit so i'm wondering chat help me out here does 5.0 to 5.3 reveal what the job of Asm was? Do you guys know this information? We've heard I about V9. I think so. I feel like it does. I feel like it, they tell you, someone tells you, it might be a Litibus. We're getting yes and no's back to back. Uh, and I saw a mentioned in passing. Yes, yeah, Hithlodeus mentions, yes, when you go talk to Hithlodeus, basically, I'm not going to get too into it, but, like, Asm oh. is... Oh, like, he was talking about uh, the member that traveled around and fixed people's issues. Basically describes a warrior yeah, yeah, of light he, yeah. on the convocation. But you don't want to yeah, use yeah, the yeah. convocation, so, you made friends out there in the world. Yeah, and so, like, it's very clearly, like, oh, yeah, that makes sense, we're who, of course, that's who we would be. So I'm curious what your thoughts are, then, if we are part of the, the convocation, why uh why didn't uh any of them recognize us at all it took until we combined in 5.0 for emma to even see a glimpse of us it's like what do you what do you think about that what do you think that means interesting that's an interesting question yeah <laughs> We're getting objection leading questions in the chat right now. That's what we're <laughs> I'm I'm simply asking what you think it means because I it, I don't just, know because like, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm not sure there. I'm not sure I fully did, understand. Just like, just like think about this real quick. I just want to like because I love blowing your mind. Think about this real quick. Why is it Emmett created Hithlodeus? That's like that's a construct of his own imagination. And that thing knows about Asm. Yet Emmett did not recognize you until the very, very end. 
Well, the way I understand Hithlodeus is that Hithlodeus did exist and was Emmett's friend, but for some reason, his construct within the recreation of Amarat is special because he is self-aware. I've never questioned this because I'm not sure I even understand uh, any of the Asians recognize how they recognize the the shards of their friends to begin with. Well, Emmett said that he can pick out pieces uh, and see them in people and he raises them up. That's right. That's right. And that gets into like how he recognized Yishtola's ether and pulled her back. Um, mm -hmm. That's right. You are right on that. Uh -huh. I've never asked this question, so I don't know. I don't know why he wouldn't recognize us my brain goes to i don't know we were, we we're so friggin we were uh super size full of light full uh that we were just like messing with his meters <laughs> yeah <laughs> or you up on the end of shadow bringers or it could even be as simple as you cross the halfway point you know over seven on rejoining and that gave you more amertine than less amertine right so now you the, the, it's factored in that favor you know we're over the edge now as it were. But yeah, I, I, I honestly did not think to analyze the Hithlidaeus bit because we knew we were that seat. Now we pieced out and we didn't become the hard. That was Vina, but did they basically described us. And then you had the part with Elidibus too, where he walks up and he's kind of being like, whoa, 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 whoa. You look, kind of look like that was weird. How did I get here? What am I doing here? That's kind of weird. And mm -hmm. they're constantly seesawing. Is it, is it Emmett leave this breadcrumb trail or are you responsible? And then you got Yishtol in the background the whole time being like, I've got this excellent theory, but completely ignore me. So they're, they're messing with, they want you to be uncertain in this moment. But and then why, why the special crystal? Cause you can, you can count the numbers, you know, when you count the numbers, when uh, they're talking to Elidibus in the earlier scene, you can see 13. There's even like one, I thought it was 12. And I was like, Ooh, how interesting. Oh my God. 12. There's, there's two seats missing and Elidibus is 13th and we're the 14th, but there's like one that's kind of like peeking around the corner. So you can actually count 13 <laughs> in that scene if you wish. Hmm. So they're covering their base as well, but obviously the stone is still important and uh, the, the, your memories, but then Emmett shows up. I don't know what to make of that at the moment. In time of your greatest need, should you wish upon it with all your heart, it will surely answer your call, says Hethlodeus and gives you the stone. But it's not spent. Yeah, because we use it and that's what makes the vision of Emmett appear that saves our asses when we fight the avatar of the warrior of and, light and then it falls from Olympus pocket becomes. to make sure that you're clear it didn't get spent it's, yeah it's still yeah. there it wasn't a consumable yeah. <laughs> what did the two of you read that scene as uh during the fight with Elidibus? i was super confused because i was just kind of hyped that it was emmett uh in the moment and then upon and then i and then i just started kind of thinking of it like a final fantasy summon like it's like some sort of spell and so it like emmett's just like a part of it kind of like a summon spell but uh, I, uh, famously between the two of us, I'm the person that doesn't get too wrapped up in the magic lore. That's Kyle. I'm here for the character beats. I took it. Do you as, have a theory, Kyle? I do, but I, you know, I, I took it. I'm gonna, but I'll keep it to my. I'll pull the Oriange, but I'm gonna keep it to myself to the proper moment. No, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> I just wouldn't put it in a crafted video, right? It's good in like exchange here, but like crafted video, it is not. I, I'm kind of more in like the the D and D kind of avatar sense of a god. Like Emmett was a god. In a sense, he could create, he could go anywhere he wanted, he could look however he wanted, he could take whatever form he wished. And in that particular battle, he took the form which was very analogous to the staff of Zodiac and stab myself in the heart and, you know, my face is flying around. Mm. So I kind of saw it as like in his final moments, he had the power to go make a bread come trail if he wanted to. Just he's, he's off. He, he could, He's like dying and he could eject a piece of himself. He and maybe that was his Amertine self there. That was like a little piece, an avatar of himself that he was like, you go do this. You go visit all these places. You leave the crystals on the ground and you be the one that's going to help my friend. Because in this moment, I realized the true power and hope of humanity that they are not necessarily greater than us, but something worth moving on from of my original task. And this is going to leave the confused and likely, you know, young adult version of Elidibus left out there with nothing, doing all by himself, which he was never meant to do. He wasn't designed 
uh, programmed to be able to handle a world without other allies as the mediator in that way. And in fact, I, I'm, mm. I'm perhaps even more interested to go back to the Anukali scenes from uh, Warring Triad and kind of see like, did he, you know, did he grab a child and then bring him up because he's a child himself? And there was like, he saw this child in the robe with the mask and there's a relationship there. And we kind of saw that like, oh, you know, this, this is a copy of me. I, I want to save this person. And maybe that was like, outside of being balanced man and randomly doing good and randomly doing evil there because he's nuts, you know, maybe that was his, uh, one of his first personal moments that he ever had where he was like, I'm, I'm doing this one for me. This, this is my personal saving I'm going to do. And that's very little to do with my mission. You know, now I can, I just realized now I can ask you so many questions. I'm so excited. Uh, last time we had a chat like this, you hadn't even started Shadowbringers. So now that you know the big secret that there are 14 reflections uh, or I guess 13 plus plus yes, the original. Thir 13, yeah. What's your vibe on all of that? How is that, like, how did that sit with you? What do you think about that when it comes to the story, when it comes to the fact that all the plans were to reunite everything together? Um, yeah, I, I never I never got to have a conversation with you about the big reveal of, of our reality. It's I, I have more qu I have more questions because I feel like they they used the, the denizens of the other worlds as like cannon fodder at the end of five three, <laughs> and I'm like, wait, if Elizabeth ripped their souls out, and we're fighting their. Did we just kill? Are they dead? Did we just kill the heroes on every damn planet in all realities? Like, I mean, that could be. They also had very similar armors, which is a little verboten. So you know, did they pull those? It's also kind of just a wink and a nod to old yeah, Final Fantasies. Yeah, some of that, but I mean, also there's the part of my mind that just goes like that's good business like hey hey we've got uh i guess the uh, 13th is destroyed right so we got a 11 we've got 11 worlds that we could expansion out to and i like that better than islands i like that better than the mist talks <laughs> and then island appears and i'm like well why didn't everyone find this <laughs> granted mm. eorzea is also flat because when we went to kugane we went all the way around the bottom so you know it could be round and there's more it could just be dangerous yeah. the other direction yeah, and then that's the high level zone that'll <laughs> open up in the next expansion right? it. We're, we've confirmed their orbs we've seen we we saw emmett's powerpoint presentation True. they are they are planets True, but yeah uh, you know th there's that there's that uh, possibility for the expansions to go that way but that's kind of where my brain just goes is, is, you know like that is such good opportunity for 10 plus years of game making oh yeah but also a lot of them are gone <laughs> Right. Yes. So there's many of them are, are gone. I'm curious. So did. It's not spelled out. Maybe it is and I'm dumb, but did it like. Cl like, mm, mm, how am I going to word this? The. Void. Which is one of the worlds. And this world of light. How do the two of you view them? Do you, does, does it connect to you in any way? What was going on between them? These are like all Kyle questions because I'm like, eh, magic lore, not not what I'm here well, for. Wasn't it Iggy Yorm that like, oops, all darkness, the 13th? Yeah, yeah, that they guy went, was a dummy. They went yeah. too hard and <laughs> <laughs> were a little too good at their job. But, oh, geez. I mean, you, you have the, the magic system, right? Where they are constantly trying new recipes for apocalypse and each world seems to inhabit or uh, get a different flavor of apocalypse through the the rejoining because there was the fire the eye the, the astral which was the bahamut one which is, it was just like everything under the sun so yeah I, guess, I, I don't understand your question but um yeah it's tough it's tough to ask yeah so Remember when you were talking with uh, Orion J and he was like, literally did like a PowerPoint presentation about light and dark and astral and umbral. And he Absolutely. showed you that that big thing he hung up in his apartment yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I was definitely paying attention and not completely distracted by where the hell did he find a print shop uh, on the first. He made it himself. He's talented. Uh, <laughs> Alpha but... no wasn't even there that long. Where did he find an artist? Uh, sorry. 
I digress. But the, uh, the, the bit there, I think, is fascinating and something that I love to talk about because I don't think it's talked about at all by anyone. And it always sits with me that Urian J is like, you know how back in our world, we were like, oh, well, light is good. Light is great. It's wonderful. And uh, is like movement. And like when we think of light, we're out in the sun and we're having a good time. And darkness is like we're indoors and it's cold. And like, and he discovers here that it's the reverse. That light and dark. And as we learn on the first, light is this stasis. And anything touched by light is like this weird, uh, everything about them kind of like shuts down when you're like a light creature, right? And yeah. darkness is this constant need for more and so the thing that i think is interesting is that the light beings right that you fight on the first are roughly the equivalent of the dark beings you fight in the void or the 13th and both of those when you look at them they each do what they're like the light beings take over his own and chill and sit there and don't do nothing meanwhile the void sent these dark beings literally try to invade every possible reality because their whole thing is like, we are constantly, we need more. We need to consume more. We need more, more, more. And so they just like, because their world is perfect darkness. They're like, F it, let's go everywhere else. And I think that's like an underlying thread that is never really discussed ever, but is like so cool. And uh, yeah, I love the fact that that exists. I, I and mean I was just like, I felt like I tried to over understand it honestly because we were getting chapters past Omega and I was still kind of going off about it and, and a couple people were like it's okay to like not worry about the triangles so much and how they connect but I did find it interesting that apocalypse through stasis and laziness was happening because of the Vothri <laughs> influence he was basically like hey let's yeah, all do that, nothing that, yeah the way that takes physical form of Vothri is really cool what I took away from it because again I tend to check out because this is something i'm very particular uh, i'm gonna sound like a picky child who doesn't like pickles on a sandwich uh which i don't um i'm very particular about how uh fiction explains rules to me and and the way final fantasy explains its rules is the kind that makes me go okay i'm not gonna ask questions until i have answers because i think the way you explain rules is convoluted um like it's not it's it, to me it's not like a really uh uh, uh a concrete set of rules it seems a little more ephemeral what i found really interesting about just shadowbringers as a whole and to me it, like the 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 lesson with orion j didn't influence all that much it was just the fact that we're now on a world where uh what we thought was good is is bad and it's it's the the driving force of of of, of villainy and death and destruction that is happening on the first like and uh I don't even remember at what Kyle. What, at what point did I go? This is like the most epic take on atheism I've ever I've ever experienced. Because <laughs> it, it it like there's a point where I get I was probably around the Katana Ravel when we learn about the summoning of Zodiac and Heidelin and how they're both just basically primals. Oh no no it's first it's it's uh it's it was five two when when Elizabeth shows up and starts showing the star showers to everybody. And you realize, yeah, you know, um, the hear, feel, think, that's just like a, a recording on repeat. Um, there's nothing special about it at all. And if you uh, are a shard of an Amora teen and you get your memory jogged, you're just going to hear it because it's just playing nonstop. And you're not special. And you're not chosen. Also, your god's kind of just a big bad monster, just like the other big bad monsters that you fought. And to me, that's where I'm like, I'm like, that's juicy as shit. Like, hell, yeah. like, cause I've, 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 I've watched so many anime. I've played so many games. Like, oh, uh, it's an anime. We got to go kill God is an actual meme. 
um, it's overplayed. I've seen it a million times. This is like the coolest version of that. I I think we're heading towards. Like to it's, me, I'm like Final Fantasy Attack and Dethrone God is the name of the game. Exactly. But but like I, I thought I I thought I was done being interested <laughs> by that concept. Mm -hmm. But they've made it really interesting here because of the way it wields the trope of of uh, the hero is light and the bad guy is darkness. And like this, you have a whole expansion where it's like, what if we just inverted that? like two really simple concepts at face value what if we drill down really get in the dirt with it um and flip it and and to me uh, uh i love it and i'm just like well, we're gonna have to kill zodiac and heidelin at the end of this it's like where i think we're heading oh, i'm right, like because, i don't trust heidelin anymore and and they're on as much autopilot if that's the case, as your Zodiac, your abandoned ship analogy that you've made, you know, the distress beacon, right? Like, don't go to the distress beacon. Just don't. It's oh, yeah. The second they told me that the message repeated, I'm like, I have seen um, every sci fi movie ever made. You do not go towards the distress nope. signal. There's nothing good at the distress signal. Turn it off your transmitter. Keep flying your ship. So, based on that, you have Heidelin and Zodiac, these two, as it's revealed, primals. Um, Elidibus, the heart of Zodiac. Do you have any thoughts on, on Heidelin or the crystal or whatever? Like, how does any of that fit together in your mind? I don't know why we're, uh, why we should trust Heidelin any more than we trust Zodiac at this point, knowing what we know, uh, and that they are for all intents and purposes primals. Yeah. You're asking an interesting question. Cause you're asking, uh, overarching questions of the whole of Shadowbringers. And that's something I haven't really thought about much because we've been playing along with it. That's why I'm here, baby. And so you got your <laughs> you got your flood of light and like the high Heidelin's the bad guy. What? And then now you have Zodiac ejecting Elidibus out into the world to kind of maybe do both at the same time. Meanwhile, I'm still thinking about the fish wizard from time to time from a realm reborn and being like <laughs> But how did he get the echo? And, and now I'm fully in the camp of a uh, little bit stabbed him with his, his, his laser sword. And that's how you get bad echo. But that's something I really wanted to see. I still re really want to see bad echo. Like, how do you get enthralled to Zodiac? Is that a, you know, do you, do you show star showers? And like, you get divided based on your Amertine faction you picked back then? Or do you have to hear, feel? I, actually, I'm pretty sure we've heard. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure we've heard like a bad Zodiac mantra. Feel it, push it, rock it, spin it. <laughs> so, you know, like bop it, slap dramatic. it. Yeah, no, no, I was thinking more Daft Punk. Are we doing Daft Punk was, or yeah, are we doing the, 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 the bop it commercial? I was, I was in the Daft Punk doing? department. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we've heard something that's like like the Heidelin mantra, but isn't. And I don't remember off the top of my head if that's. I mean, different. I remember seeing like the hero shot of Zodiac that was, you know, a very similar hero shot to like the hero shot of Heidelin, but I don't remember if there were lines right but realm and, reborn feels so long ago and there are there you know, and that one just statics which now we've started to develop a it's interesting to think of the lore archaeology the team does to maintain those through lines and i think just like a normal dm like a normal human being what happens is you did this thing you're like let's put a static on it to make it kind of weird and then in the future they look back at that scene where they showed the first zodiac crystal spin and they're like oh we added static can we play with this well what if elidibus's memories are static what if we start this kind of static through line that maybe we're not seeing complete visions or it's actually a part of something else or the star shower thing that starts the game and you're like okay uh, you know I, I, I opened a website in 2000 and there's little torch gifts playing like star shower with it, it's cool that's cool stuff but you don't really think of it as a vessel of anything until I believe they do that archaeology and kind of pull it back. Like, it's wonderful to think everybody's a lore savant, but really, like, it's just as flattering to say that they remember their own story and use the pieces they built as it is to say it was planned from the beginning. So is there any, do you have any thoughts on Heidelin? Just like, you know, we kind of know who the heart of Zodiac is or was. We kind of know that, like, there's a Zodiac out there, but like, what about Heidelin? I mean, obviously you said, do we trust Heidelin? Uh, is Heidelin the big bat? Like when we're I'm in curious. the, when we're in the enemy, and and there's the lore bomb drop that someone 
became the heart of Hydaelyn, which is how we learned Soma became the heart of Zodiac. That to me is a big hanging thread here at the end of Shadowbringers. It's like, well, if uh, Elidibus became the heart of Zodiac, but then also continued on as this, this soul primal uh, uh, doing his best Asian impression with the memories of fractured memories of Elidibus. Did that happen with the person who became the heart of Hydaelyn? Well, I, I, like that's that. That's where my brain goes. It's like we're gonna meet the Elidibus antithesis of of, of Hylan and then Walker is like kind of where I think we're heading. Well, and and then you find yourself killing the balance guy. So do we continue that thread? And there, there's certainly, I think, a very easy plot point you can pull off where Zodiac is invincible and Hydaelyn's invincible unless you kill both at the same time because they were created with a similar purpose to balance each other. Therefore, while one exists, the other, and, you know, we kill all the gods and find ourselves in this new world without them. And of course, there's still, like, Ralgar and stuff like that that, you know, could easily be brought in other threads. There are other primals that we kind of, like, li like live and let lived, though, right? Because there was, uh, there was Rama. Like, it was just, we didn't kill him. Uh, he didn't just kind of... No, we, we, you're thinking of uh, the trials we've been doing um here in shadowbringers but rama just like put us up for a trial and he was like oh yeah, no y'all are cool uh, and then we just left and then there was also you who would become a primal and we seem totally fine with that but those are like the two examples i can think of like everything else even because the you know uh the knights 12 were all riding primals like you and we, they had to go So it's like, I, I, don't, I, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't read so much into Heidelin, but I don't trust her. I don't trust Heidelin anymore. Doesn't seem, doesn't, we don't seem special. Like a little, maybe, maybe a little bit got to me. Maybe a little bit did what he, he wanted to do, you know, called it, called oh, it we are special. the question. We're just in a different special camp now with our, with our crystal, with our powers, with our 14th seat, with our Azem stuff going down. It's a very different kind of special. And will we continue? I mean, could we go around with a picture of, our showers like is that you know stand in front of Ulda and be like hey we need forces everybody you know roll out the flag and it unfolds and everyone's like oh damn play the song and, i mean in, in particular with the you know the, the image of amarab being projected you're like oh you can like just up this you, you can make a whole powerpoint that really sends it home it's the best way i can think of it is uh and this is gonna sound insane because it is but it's like we're in Harry Potter world and we're all like, I'm a wizard. And then I find out everyone I know is also a wizard, but spoilers, my name is Luke Skywalker. Like it's that kind of thing. <laughs> we're like, Oh, well now you're yeah. just better. Like, sure. There can be a million people that are called to action to be a warrior of light, but like only one of them has the like gem of Asm. You know what I mean? Like only one of them has that crystal. And so now you're just like boop, a little bit above everybody else. That's like, the only yeah, way I can we, think of it. We literally find out we're like our past life. We were the most adventurous Amora team or Bassian, whatever term you want to use. Like we, we were a badass among badasses, like in a, an entire race of people that had magic that was so powerful. They literally will anything they thought of into existence. We were the ones with that power that also still like picked up a sword and were, were killed, were like taking care of problems out in the countryside. Yeah, I think that's like a fun little detail to add. It also makes you think about what the other Amortines or Asians, what they were up to, right? Like, I think in Academia Editor, I think they say that, uh, uh, I was about to say Thancred, that's not who, La Habrea. La Habrea was like a smarty pants. You know what yeah. I mean? Yes. Yeah, we were memeing on the on on that stream when we did Academia Night. We're like, I, and I was like, the Lahavray I knew was a moron. <laughs> he was a oh, I said blunt instrument. He was a blunt instrument. Like he was not a person for uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Intricate schemes. Yeah, sure. Lahavray La and Realm are born just kind of throws himself directly at whatever bars his path. Yeah, I actually like that Emmett during one of the scenes with uh, the Emperor, I think. I'm, it's like in the, it's either at the end of Stormblood or the beginning of this where he's just like, 
that La Habre guy sucked. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy to me that he's just trashing his own guy, but it makes sense. So yeah, I, I think that's interesting that they all had like different jobs and we're only kind of now discovering it. I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, and it, but it also like it like it it sends me into a place where I don't I don't know how to read into it because it's like how much of a sure. how, how much of the elitibus we experienced was the Omoritine elitibus uh, and like clearly the La Habrea we experienced was not really analogous to how he was when he was you know back in Amarat as uh, pre sundered mm. uh, or pre sundering. I got some I, I got I got some video evidence here for you, Jesse. Great for a podcast, but you know we got a live crowd too. I don't like there's some things that you just go okay now hold on right like this the statue at the end of the academia is so well a civic center too like it just kind of looks like oh they they painted a horse and put it outside like ah community art but also it could be like all the shapes of all the universes built together by their intricate knowledge of the past and then the La Habrea ghost falls over dead when it summons. That's, that's the... not La Habrea, by the way. Oh, Kyle, that we've not been the... corrected. Oh, on okay, that. we've been that corrected on La that. Habrea. Well, we're reading all the messages along the way. So, like, why does the the Amertine fall over dead to summon the the giant flying penguin? Like, there's some things that just your brain goes, uh, uh, maybe someday. Oh well, that that's just that's our that was actually our first breadcrumb to uh, them sacrificing themselves to become Zodiac and Heidelin. Good. Mm. That that's. that's... That's that's an Amora team sacrificing themselves to summon a creation. But it's a recording of it that Emmett made and then projected. And, you know, Moonbrita's sacrifice to become Aether was you know, way more dramatic. And this guy's just up here making one Quetzalcoatl. Like, it, 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 it seems small potatoes in comparison. When you have the, the uh, uh, Titan AE reservoir... <laughs> of memories and creations you've made why would one infinitely powerful being as they're presented to us even sacrifice itself to make a a penguin that's a great question and then of course the statue behind it that is like very like someday <laughs> someday this thing hopefully will make a lot of sense because it's very interesting to analyze and i think if you know i was a modern player at the modern time of release like this, this would have been my 30 minute dissertation that makes everyone go, oh my God. Like, you know, people make fun of Dark Souls lore people who are like, oh, brother Ezekiel. And they're like, oh, I got a whole video about that. That I would be going off on the statue full blown. Mm -hmm. But I know there's more game to play. So I, I'll avoid making that, that fool of myself. Speaking of more game. Ooh, speaking of more game. All right, you've uh, you got your meanwhile. You had your perfect ending. Everything was good. You saved the day, the first. A okay, you've done it. You're a hero. <laughs> meanwhile, back in the Imperial Palace, thoughts. What's going on there? What do you think? Is, what do you think these two boys are up to? I have no idea. I have absolutely no. I know Xenos just wants to fight us again, and he wants to become more powerful. And previously talked about gorging themselves on something or other. And I took that to, I took that to mean essentially the power of Zodiac is how I took that. Cause like he's already gorged themselves on the power of a pretty powerful primal in Shinryu. Uh, doesn't really seem to think Asians are a particular threat or challenge to him at this point. So what's the next big game? Uh, that That's where my brain is going because he's got this kind of almost uh shonen jump uh, uh uh just want just power hungry vibe to him uh but very much and i i, I talked when, when the hell did i when did i go off on my bullshit about xenos recently kyle i think it was well, which on stream. time which one <laughs> you know, the, yeah, i don't know we had some people in chat who were like i don't like xenos after shut up i'm like xenos is great he's great he's a shonen villain but he, they they wrote him within the confines of the rules of their own world so oh, it was it's, yesterday. It's great. Because we were hearing that 5.3 was the part where the Xenos hate really started, which was yes. a shock because we were thinking, like, surely people just disliked him back in Stormblood because he's just kind of the blunt instrument type. But, and the combat sexual, as people put it. But apparently this was the, the bridge too far for some in the community on Xenos. 
Well, it's hard coming off of Emmett. Um, like I like five three a lot, but I still like because yesterday folks were like five three or five zero. Which what do you prefer? I'm like five zero every day because to me the question is, do you like Emmett or Elizabeth more? And I think Emmett is uh, a master class villain, like absolute master class, and the villain becomes a blurred line by the end, which uh, makes it even better as far as I'm concerned. Um, but uh, but yeah, I. Um, I don't know, right? Because it's it's Fan Daniel, this new character of Fan Daniel, who I don't even know. Might like I've, I've I've questions. Who is he? That scene we haven't met before seems important. Uh, I'm really hung up on before we knew he was called Fan Daniel. The previous cutscene between uh, the my mysterious new Asian writing in the body of Asahi and Xenos talks like Xenos is having the the recurring dream of visiting Amarat, and Fan Daniel is like, "Hey, are you interested in that?" Because I can talk about it, and I believe the line is something along the lines of, like, admittedly, only some of it is firsthand. I'm like, how can you only have partial firsthand knowledge? I'm hung up on that quote. I'm really hung up on that quote of how can you only have partial firsthand knowledge? Were you drunk, but you were there? Do you have a shitty memory? Did you get bonked on the head and you only remember part of it? Like, how is that even a thing? Because first-hand knowledge means you were there. How do you have first? -hand? It doesn't mean like someone told you the story and they didn't finish the story. That that's partial second-hand knowledge. Well, it, I I assume that that is our thread of Emmett with the only click on him time scene dependent on that you click on him right now, where he talked about how you can up jump somebody, you can find a worthy vessel, someone who's you know into it ideally that they're a shard and you're gonna elevate them to Asian, but. It makes it sound like when you get elevated to Assy and you get some ancestral memories. So he has some. That's an interesting thought. They haven't DVDs. spelt it out though. Like, like you have one fourteenth memory, but is that how it works? Is that how he has partial knowledge? He, he, he's a, he's a shard of, uh, uh, uh an important Amoratine. So he only remembers one fourteenth or however many times rejoining, right? Cause we count the rejoinings that have already happened. Right. If you're, I have no idea when you jump up to shit. Asian. This is where I this, this is where I get lost. <laughs> if you're an Asian, do you keep your rejoins of previous, or are you based on the number of rejoins the Asian had? Well, they weren't really like so. That's where it starts, you know, getting a little getting a little muddy. Yeah, yeah, and I I, I see people like yelling in chat, chat like I'm 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 dodging my eyes over there. I'm not reading with intensity. If someone's getting up to some bullshit in chat, I'm not seeing it. It's that, all good. That's the thing. Good. Like, Have fun, y'all. We've all played this um, at different paces, and and it is clear that in the in the love of the lore, it is very very easy to forget which patch. We just had this question, right? That Jesse was like, "Hey, Chad, did you guys remember if they know what uh, the 14th seat was about?" And yes, no, yes, like. It, it, it is kind of it is right right <laughs> yeah. or which which patch did Bojia come out and that's one that was hotly debated in our channel for a little bit because it's hard to remember you know it, it, it is a complete yeah. story and then we were in the thick of it and they were like this is where you can stop and we're like we're enjoying it we're just gonna keep going we're gonna break our own rule and just keep going in Bojia yeah. <laughs> even though apparently it rolled out in in pieces um yeah I don't I don't know how to take the scene I, and 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 it's uh, obviously I, like I'm taking it. It's important that he's in As Asahi's body has uh, access to that family's now clout and fortune. I find that uh, to be an interesting odd couple because Zenos does not seem to give a shit about politics. Zero interest in using the throne that he's uh, cooking on. And and I mean, legitimately doesn't even remember the dude's name and clearly has been told the name Fan Daniel before and, and insults him <laughs> in this very scene. So these seem just to be too like I likened it. I don't know if you watched the most recent video on this channel called the Grinding Gear channel, uh, Jesse, but I, I likened it to two junkies in a den that are so high that they, they're not Jesse even Pinkman. Yeah, yeah, they're not oh, even they're not even connecting. They're not connecting anymore. They're both high on their own shit and not paying attention to each other enough. What do you think that means then? Well, if there if is some your thoughts there. Now we're starting to get into like where you can start meta knowledge thing, not using your experience from other video games, but also from this interview, a reverse interview as it happened to be today because you brought up the poster. So now I'm like, wait a minute. No, hang on. We're making piles of dead bodies. Apparently in the throne room, piles of dead bodies are great for summoning. 
So, you know, Fandaniel's making, you know, the hunting grounds. Can can Fandaniel just start using Xenos to make piles of bodies because he's having so much fun and those piles of bodies would be great? Which side of the spectrum are those bodies on? Are they light or dark body? You know, if you kill a bunch of bodies, is that stasis or is that activity ast- or, uh, the, the darkness, right? And we have the required the requiredness of 5.3 Crystal Tower, which includes the world of darkness. And whatever the hell happened to Nero in there, that was <laughs> hard to remember and hard to fathom at the time. But, you know, with Grahatia back, fully part of the Scions, we could absolutely go in a big far off about the world of darkness and what happened to the 13th. And maybe, maybe we actually explore the other side of the light now since we did Shadowbringers and it was so based on that stasis. Yeah, because we've never looked at the darkness like straight like straight into it, right? All we've seen is what comes over to the source to attack it. Right. Well we're then then the big lady and then the corruption of Nero and the and Sid mm-hmm. grabbing his hand and all that kind of that kind of stuff. Yeah. I guess I yeah the whole point. I guess we did kind of stare straight into it when we went to the world of darkness. I'm an idiot anyway. Well, I, I um, don't think that like that is that is deep. Like comparatively how fun big gold guy like it's it's the crystal tower is weird and in the moment and you're doing the noah thing and you gotta get like a couple of horns and the colored horns at the doors it's it's a crystal tower is a lot for a new player (laughs) but it is a great example of fantastic again i don't know that it was the plan but whether they reappropriated that storyline for Shadowbringers. I think the payoff in 5.3 was one that there's a video out there that people in chat were trying to tell me that I should tell you about, but it's unimportant really because it's all about the dev team. Um, I, when I first started playing on stream, I was like, guys, I'm convinced this, this crystal tower is going to be important. This like, <laughs> it literally is made up of, uh, I was like, look at this. All the crystals mean something. So you got the crystals over there, the Bahamut, and then you got the crystals. I was like, that crystal tower, it, it, according to the lore, it sucks up energy. That is just like white orosite. So when they spell it out in 5.3, I was losing my mind. I was going crazy. I was like, yeah. So, but that's not me predicting it. That is, they literally set it up years and years and years and years in advance. And then someone on the writing team pulled that thread and was like, let's just like make this a plot point. And that's all them. And the reason it's easy to figure out is because it was there. And I was like, whoa, that's so neat. So I think that's, that's very cool that they do that and they continue to do that and they keep pulling at things. And so what I think is great is anytime you have a conversation where we can sit here and you can just like pontificate forever about anything and i'm gonna let you know everything you said may or may not come up again i'm not gonna tell you but (laughs) if it does come up again it's because they start pulling threads and it's so interesting to see what they choose is important and what is kind of like well that was a fun thing we did (laughs) you know what i mean it's uh yeah i know i'm not gonna tell you a damn thing i can't wait for your journey it's gonna be great no that's fair (laughs) and as we've been playing through over the last year and a half the game has advanced too so it's interesting to to hear people be like oh that's been explained you'll enjoy that someday or think that people are like that's that's never gonna be a thing honestly it could be any threat in this whole business could be a thing like i really appreciated that when a little bit little bis was sucked up by the crystal tower that they took that little moment to go twinkle 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 into the tower i'm like oh good because I, I need that i need just that little confirmation i'm there's still that thordan thing where like it flew into the sword but we used to use our our site to and then we break it into pieces you know could you booze door it from monsters inc and rebuild the pieces and you know eject out a a dude could you do we need to destroy the crystal tower because now we have a little bit in the crystal tower but it's on the first but it's a might be a copy uh was graha uh, young graha cool with old graha moving into his body or is someday he's gonna be like i'm having headaches because my young self is mad at myself for taking over myself and i saw i saw a meme you know, describing a meme on a podcast, not the best thing to do, but it gave me it gave me a sense of peace this week where someone said, oh, great story. Thanks. It has pockets. As in plot holes. 
And the responder said, that's just where people insert their fanfic. Oh, that's calming. <laughs> and, and this this experience with Final Fantasy XIV is a massive fanfic of their own design that they keep bringing back these pieces. So what will be mm-hmm. important in the future? I don't, why was there a giant lady in the world of darkness? I don't know. Maybe it was what the engine was capable of at the time. Big lady action. <laughs> okay, so while we're on this, Here's the best part. Okay. What are your loose threads? What do you need answers to? What is the thing that keeps you up at night that makes you <laughs> like, I need to know. I need to know. I, they've told me so much. I need, like, I, mods, community, right now, start writing it down. I want to see by the end if they get the payoff they deserve. What is, what are you, what are you like? I just want an answer. <clears throat> Uh, I want to know why. I hope uh, my my uh, confused state on uh, how much are the Asians we've uh, even met really themselves. I, I, uh, what the hell's going on with that? Like what? I I question everything about every Asian we've met. Like I don't know how much of a little bit was actually a little bit. I don't know how much. Clearly, La Habrea was wildly different than La Habrea that lived in Amarat. And Which would that, have been a that, great justification if he was fractured or not um, a paragon, because then you could be like, oh, well, parts of him are missing. Yeah, yeah. And and Elidibus has an extra layer of, well, he's also like a primal, like, and and I still like, I look at Elidibus and I'm like, Elidibus was a different character. Like every scene you freaking saw him every game, or like every time in the game. He was pretty consistent in Realm Reborn. Sticking with the Xenos, I was just like. I was, I was like honestly a little annoyed with the writing. I'm like, they should have written this like a little bit is in Xenos, but you just kind of, he just, he does such a good Xenos impression. It just feels like you're fighting Xenos. Um, so that, 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 so I have this. With that though, I think your last video, the two of you nailed it perfectly that a little bit says when you beat him, he's like, yo, they wanted me to become Zodiac. And so I did it for them. I became Zodiac. And I think his bit is that he just becomes whoever he's needed to be. And you brought this up. Like he becomes someone else. He's that person now. And he becomes this person. He's that person now. And he really doesn't have a him. He's he doesn't, kind of like, but they did a good job. They did such a good job with it in uh, five, two and five, three. Cause it really did feel like a little bit piloting Ardbert, not Ardbert, which is what I wanted when he was in Xenos. I want, I wanted like the, the ass scene to come out of the Xenos body, not like literally, but like in, in how he talks to us. Um, and, and so, so like it continued to just so like, I, I'm like, La Habre is not La Habre. We haven't met La Habre. Who the hell is La Habre? Apparently he was a smart dude. Uh, we, we met like CW dumb high school jock archetype La Habre. Um, and, and that calls in the question Emmett, like how much is the Emmett that I lo- I'm in love with? How much is that actually even Emmett? Like it calls in the question, so, every paragon of the source we've met. So number one on this list more Asians is what you're saying what you're saying yes more 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 as 100 percent as much emmet as i can get and that also comes to like i don't know how much i'm like i may just miss shit on emmet appearing in the trial or i'm hoping that gets spelled out clearly later on hmm um, but also I did just, and, and like I said, I've already said that the, to me, the biggest dangling plot thread from Shadowbringers is what the hell's, do we have an antithesis of Elidibus, uh, like Elidibus is Zodiac, what, uh, that Amoratine was to Heidel and I forget the name. Do they name it? Do they name the, the Amoratine? Yes. It does get named. The, uh, is he, he or she, is it she? I think it's confirmed to be a girl. Um, because like it, is she out there somewhere and we just haven't known it? Is there another paragon of the source? Like, we could be wrong. We could have miscounted. That's, I mean, um, that's the thing too. Yeah, with a long, a long story, there's always the chance someone who should be dead comes back and predicting yeah. that stuff is. Oh, that wasn't that time and... where I was going with it. I was like, well, instead of three paragons of the source, what if there was a fourth? Maybe there is a fourth. Maybe we're, well, we're a, we're a shard. Um, that's confirmed. But, um, you know, what if there is a, a fourth one out there? That's something you could do. You could you could play with that, but and and I think there is, and I think it's whoever the hell Heidelin. Like it's like if that could happen with Lidibus, why couldn't it happen with Heidelin? Mm. Kyle. Mm. Yeah. Anything else? Any? I, let's make this list. I passed okay. the talking stick. 
the the question was uh what what plot holes need filling to for satisfaction by the end or yeah like what are you this is it the next expansion is it for this story so what do you want them to to wrap up what do you need an answer to what do you like tell me i i play uh, so i played a game when i was growing up called black and white and i love love the idea of when all the people who believe in something are gone that god dies so i find primals fascinating i'd love to explore primals again i'd love to do kind of a return to primal that'd be really nice which kind of feels like we might be getting there because we walked in the uh, the weapon stuff like the ruby and they're like what primals did that eat and i'm like well that's an interesting thing to say and not address at all who, who's what primals are you feeding this thing to make it do these cool moves but i was also uh running home from the bus so I could make Power Rangers Lost in Space as a child because the lore was badass. And in the particular end of that, the Red Ranger had to kill Zordon in order to decrease the amount of good in the universe so that evil could be defeated and brought down as well. And if that's what they, if we, if we kill Zordon, if we kill Heidelin, I'm into it. I love that idea. But I don't, I don't, think there's anything that I haven't been yelled at <laughs> that's like plot hole heavy in my mind uh, that I haven't been like oh my god Kyle just calm down and wait just wait for it wait for it okay nothing immediately springs to mind I have my desires and personal tones I enjoy anything you and your desires would like to see is there something you're like you aren't it isn't bugging you but you're like damn that'd be nice to see like oh, if they Garlemald. could do that that'd be cool yeah garlemald like we we meanwhile in garlemald we've gone there in a solo duty we've panned over the uh tile set of the city but it'd be nice to you know actually go there freaking go get, there get some yeah. lay, lay of the land see the launch bays that they keep sending things to the coast of eorzeo with Dude, I have no idea what the next like new zone is. Like, I'm like, are we going to the moon? I just keep seeing every time I load up my game, is this <laughs> the of love and the fucking moon shows yeah. up? Um, Which is and also I'm just like, wait, why? Yeah. Why is Elizabeth hanging out on the moon? Like, I know the moon was important when, when they were talking about the moon of Dollar Moon, but like, why is like it looks like Earth Moon important? Why well, is that and, important? And you why are we hanging out on Earth Moon? You can't meta knowledge the game based on its genre because you fight robots with sniper rifles in non lore, <laughs> you know, non near things. There's robots with sniper rifles, like yeah. it, Tales of Love. Are, do, are, is there going to be a scene where we're you know we're all like you know three, two, one, and we load up inside NASA? Is that Nassian <laughs> ship on the launch screen? We're all going to go to Mars and go to the moon and crash land into it and like. Ah, does Xenos eat the moon because he stabs it real good? Like, th sure. <laughs> yeah, is the moon an egg? Hey, obviously, I, I did do that comparison. I, there is a video out there where I I, com I confirmed that all the moons are being shot from one side. Is that a PNG, or is the moon legit? The same moon hovering between fourteen reflections. Because if you go to the first and you go to the source <laughs> and you look at the moon, they're both the exact same. I moon. think Jesse's uh, uh, reaction I, is, is debunking your theory, your moon I, theory. I didn't want to spoil anything, but I'm gonna. The <laughs> twist ending of Endwalker is that one, the moon is a 3D projection, and two, Xenos eats it. Yep. He <laughs> swallows it whole. Yep. And it's yeah, that's why people love love it so much. That's, yeah, but they hate They're Zenos. Like, this is the best thing I've ever played. Because Zenos is like, <laughs> like just <laughs> sucks it down. Yeah, the moon. He eats the moon. It came out of nowhere, yeah, and, well. but I have to spoil it now. I'm so sorry, chat. Uh, I'm so sorry. Damn it. <laughs> well, we're sorry we can't invite you back on anymore because you're gonna make our audience <laughs> so mad that you spoiled that. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, our mods are gonna find a way to ban you from uh, us calling you on Discord. That's what's gonna the happen. The phrase here. "Xenos eats the moon" is now in my lexicon, <laughs> and it's how it's how this story ended for me. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, if Zeno eats the moon, will you get a Zeno eating the moon tattoo? That's what uh, I want. No, know. I will not. Uh, but it all depends. Like it, it, this is all going back deep into my childhood, an older childhood. <laughs> but when everybody clapped for Shinji, it's my biggest fear in the world. Playing anything that is slightly astral, slightly multiversal. I'm just Can you like, explain what that means? Because I, I I know the meme where everyone's like. Like, I know, but I've Shinji. never watched it, so I don't know what that means. Okay, so there's a badass 
show about killing it's kind of it's just kaijus right you basically have giant beasts coming from space to kill everybody so they make giant robots to fight them sure. but the final episode ran out of funding so they had to draw it was like drawn with blue marker and then the only and as like shinji went do i feel can am i alive what am i who am i and as an adult you look at it and you go well you had a messed up childhood that's what this exploration is about but as a kid you're like oh my god ride the robot ride the awesome robot and fight the things so in the I final moment, I did not have Kyle explains Evangelion to Jesse on my bingo card. So this is great. Podcast. I've never, I, I've never seen how it ends. I once dated a girl who loved the show, but I didn't watch any of it. So this is <laughs> like, uh, I'm here uh, for it. I'm ready. Uh, Let me know. Wait, what, hang on. Watch, watch the original. Wait, the did, oh my god, the old school animation you is telling some them of the most to watch, badass. Were you telling them to watch all, of, play all of Final Fantasy fourteen, but you weren't willing to watch uh, nine discs or so of anime? That's why it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I am. I think we I just heard how one of those dates ended. <laughs> I think we just heard. So everybody claps for Shinji because he found peace at the end and he's like merged into the all being or something like that. It's left for you to assume. Then years later, they make an end of Evangelion DVD that's supposed to explain this. And they just did the same thing with more effects and, and way more production gotcha. value. So okay, it's it, it's astral, it, it's heady. You know, it, it it's up to your own interpretation. I think Final Fantasy does that really strong, like with the Ishtola lines, where they present a theory, then back it up and say, you know, you're free to explore mm. your own ideas. But I'm always nervous that it's gonna it's gonna go that way. So Zeno's eating the moon would be actually preferred in that case. <laughs> I love Xenos Eats the Moon. I am. I don't know what's going to happen with that. I may show up at FanFest in a custom-made shirt <laughs> with Xenos just like forking, knifing the moon. I don't like Excellent. it. So my I'm working on some though. new merch right now. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can even, okay. uh, get that into my design time. Yeah, resident for artist, you, please. Yeah, I yeah, would delicious. love that shirt. I'd wear that nonstop. <laughs> That's hilarious. Anything oh. else that you're like, man, I wish this would happen, or I want to see this, or before this ends, I'd love oh. this thing. Oh, more more monster types like we had at the end of Amarat. I thought that design with the 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 Giga piano organ with all the faces <laughs> on it yeah. was really cool. And it was such a that monster model of the first beast, the chicken thing. The chicken thing's the chicken thing, but like the, it's a reference to another anytime I'm, anytime i'm like this doesn't make any sense in the story people are like it's a reference for another final fantasy and i'm like that's why it fell flat but um, yeah but i want like uh, i want to see like but, the absolute like we have the void creatures but i i would love to see more right end of days creatures what do you what do you make of that whole situation? Uh, thank you for reminding me of another dangling plot thread that I forgot. I want answers to of like where the hell they come from. What? Why? Why did they come from? Where did they come from? What the hell? Like, what do you like, understand of that right now? Like, what do you get about the Amortine end of days? Uh, uh, that it happened that monsters showed up but i don't know why they started showing up i i'm i'm i have a guess that it had something to do with the fact that they were just like creating whatever the hell they wanted because they could oh it no oh, of... well that was badass man like basically uh emmett's dm and the whole run for you and he's like yeah fear entered our minds and in a world where we can create anything out of our minds the second someone's like don't make pink elephants you make pink elephants so like the whole society. Are you, are you going Ghostbusters? Don't think about the Stay Puft Marshmallow. Yeah, exactly. Your... I love, dude. I okay. love, I love right. Ghostbusters. So I'm all for I know. nothing that I know. could I'm possibly you. destroy us. Mr. Stay Puff, I'm all for it. So wait, so wait, hold on. So they created those creatures? That's with I their minds? I don't know if it was intentional, but I think that they're linked somehow. It feels like it would be too much to say that the unsundered world was invaded by an outside world i mean maybe you have the void and and like all the elements of the multi-triangle hold up but it it feels it would be really confusing if we fractured into 13 plus one but also there's another universe outside of that to fathom yeah and that make, makes me start to think about like the astral alignments in world of warcraft where they are represented by like 
locations. What I like about 14 is it's these are like magic types. And when they get out of imbalance, they affect the world itself. And it's not as much of an invasion. Like I, 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 as much as I say, I don't care about the magic lore. I like that in final fantasy 14 and how that, how it handles that within its, within its story. So just in um, general, you want to know what I'm trying to, for the list purposes in general, you want to know what caused the more teens to freak out. I, yeah. And, I want to know what caused the end of days. Like I want it spelt out. Cause right now I'm like, I'm pretty sure there's a link with their creation magics somehow went wrong. Maybe I, I like where Kyle's heading with this, where like they, they started to think of horrible ways this could go and then manifested it into, into uh, existence. But, but also like the, the, my brain goes otherwise, like, was it like bad actors? Like if, if someone can disagree with the Zodiac plan and go and create their own Heidelin, who's to say they were an actual utopia Were there other remora teens that were just like screw you guys we're all gonna create a freaking uh cult and we're gonna become monsters and attack you like there's to me there's a lot of different weight different directions that could go that makes sense within the rules of the world as i understand them and that sure. is the really important part everybody who's having a laugh right now it's as i understand them and i'm wrong a lot um, and it's also a very well-written story like we trashed on Thancred for a long time through Shadowbringers. And we got a head pat in the end. I'm like, oh, that's just the cutest thing ever. Like, that's all he can muster. And I'm okay with that, man. Yeah, that's just you being you. I love you, guy. Show that scene to me before. I'm like, oh, another head pat? Really? Come on, Thancred. You didn't grow at all. <laughs> that's, one of the, that's one of those moments where... I thought to myself, did they just not have the tech for a hug? But then there's multiple times in this game where people are hugging. Yeah. So I was like, that's just a character moment for Thancred. And I was like, Thancred, that's like your kid, bro. <laughs> like, <grow laughs> up there. Yeah. It's like, what's the matter with you, dude? We're, yes. we're now baiting like uh, 40 comments about uh, head pats and Japanese culture. And I'm like, I get it. I'm not, I'm in America and I'm projecting. Let me sure, project. Sure. <laughs> I want to hug. <laughs> never tell me about American versus Japanese culture. Cause I played final fantasy 15. And I know for a fact that in the English version at the end of the game, uh, when they're all sitting around the campfire in the English version, Stuff has gone down. If you haven't played it, I'm not going to spoil. Stuff has gone down. And the best the main character can do is like, hey, thanks a lot, dudes. You're my favorite bros. <laughs> and in the Japanese version, he's literally like, I love you guys. So don't tell me <laughs> what is what. I played that game and I was so upset when I found that out because I was like, this boy can't even tell him he loves these guys. Like, get out of here, man. You owe these bros. Like, it's tough. So that's all I'm saying. The Asian missed their bros so much. They have started a, an inter uh, 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 reflection war. <laughs> yeah, to bring back their bros. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, and yeah, we got the, the the chai hugging scene, but no kissing. There will be no kissing in Final Fantasy fourteen. He he might None. he puckered up. He did pucker, but maybe it was in pain. We don't know. We'll never and, know. Yeah, it might have been a pain pucker. Yeah, he, he might have been gasping for air, yeah. and that's just how. Yes, we did have a hug early on. I, I, I was reviewing footage this week. Um, I think uh, cat grandma hugged Minfilia, so we had a hug actually in a realm reborn. We've had hug. We've had multiple. Oh yeah, we've yeah. we've had plenty. Of also, hugs. I have I have one more thing on my list that I want that is uh, uh, extremely uh, uh, personal and not a massive lore moment. I just there's a scene I want. There's a scene I have to have by the end sure. of Ben Walker. I need a scene where someone outs to Master Matoya the name that Ishtola went by on the first. Oh. I need a scene Absolute. where Ishtola's embarrassed. I need it. I absolutely need it because Matoya is my favorite side character in Final Fantasy XIV. She is wonderful. She is such a fully realized and perfectly wielded witch archetype and also a yeah. perfectly wielded master archetype. And those are two things I freaking love. Um, so yes, I need that scene. I need a scene where Matoya finds out that Yashola used her name. On the and it's, and it's so well done that Yashola is sassy as hell. And she clearly gets that from Matoya yep. who is just a sass queen. And so, yep. oh yeah, I'm with you. Matoya is one of my favorite characters, period. Yep. So yeah, I'm always down for more Matoya. Yeah. 
Yeah, she's wonderful. And they both just act like they don't care about each other when in reality they are clearly the most important people in each other's lives. Yes, yes. Love it. Absolutely love it. You've let us on this. What was your favorite part of 5.3, Jesse? Um... I'm sure you have a video about it, but you're here talking to us, so we can just ask you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I <laughs> so I liked first off the Asm reveal. I thought was great. It was a question I had for a long time. Like, why am I even involved in any of this on a higher level, right? Because it's clearly like we're the hero, sure, but on a on a higher level, what is going on here? And I thought that was good. Uh, I loved the sort of last hurrah bit of going back and getting a moment with everyone um except urian j who just packs a bag because <laughs> whatever well, he he did I, I, like i i think i talked did that make the edit kyle where i said he he didn't have like a personal connection like every other scion did like every other scion had like one person or in alphano's case uh, like a couple that like represented their growth on the first where Zorian J hung out with the fairies and, and drank tea and painted a really <laughs> badass poster. Yeah. I, when it comes to the, the, those little bits at the end, I very much think that even though it was, well, first off, the scene where you and Graha like hold the staff, that's like art. It's that's beautiful. like a painting. Yeah. yeah. That and when all the Warrior of Light and then all the other war like those scenes, someone was just like, bring me artwork. <laughs> like that is screenshot worthy to the nth degree. It, both those are amazing. And still um, is. And MMOs are like, we constantly are talking about it looks good for an MMO. That, is, that has probably left our lips more than any other phrase in making videos about Final Fantasy 14. But those scenes just look good. There's right. no modifier needed. They just hold up. Yeah, and I and I love the idea of your character like seeing what Graha is willing to sacrifice. You're like still there to help him. Uh, like it's his choice what he's doing, and you're like, I got you, bro. I think that's a beautiful moment. Um, but all the saying goodbyes are great. However, I cried. Oh, bless those streams somewhere when Arbert gets to say goodbye. I was like, stop this, <laughs> stop it. I can only take so much. Like that was like, that's a genuinely beautiful scene. And I can only imagine cause it's at the end of just a, so many gut punches that I could just be like, I can imagine being physically spent by the end of that. That was me. It was, I, uh, the, the, the chai scene got me. And so by the time we got to Art bird, I was just like emotionally numb. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, but it's, it was like, it's such a great, totally unneeded moment. Like they didn't need to do that. No one was out there like, I got to see the resolution between Ardbert and Seto. Cause I feel like that's a really important plot point. Not even remotely doesn't matter, but it gave us like a good one final farewell bit that I think is, is super just like, I don't know, man, that was, that was fantastic. And then going back, getting the scene where it's like we bring back our boy i've watched every sing i'm gonna make a generalization but this is true <laughs> every single i'm gonna say many guys but literally every single woman i've watched play final fantasy 14 when he shows up te like tears just so happy he's alive and i'm like find yourself someone who looks at you the way final fantasy 14 streamers look at grahatia that's what you need in your life <laughs> because oh it's hilarious every time they're just like i love him so much i was like damn i wish i had a little graha because my god everyone loves graha so it's hilarious and i love watching that and then again i actually kind of love that fan daniel is unlike any of the other Asians. and he's kind of he's a trope like he is the thing that I love, uh, having played every Final Fantasy, Fan Daniel and Xenos are just tropes now. Like, Xenos is like, I'm the evil guy who doesn't talk much because I'm evil. And Fan Daniel's like, I'm the evil guy who talks a whole bunch because I'm evil. <laughs> and it's just like, 
we back in there, baby. Yeah. It's time. And I love Final Fantasy tropes because they always pay off in the end and they're always super fun and silly. But also, it's just like, yeah, let's do this. Let's but do he also, this thing. He's, he's useful. That, that, that's why it works, right? Like, it always bothered me in Sleeping Beauty that um, Maleficent had like a bunch of goblins that, that made no sense. <laughs> she, she seemed like she had a plan together, but her minions were useless. Sure. I mean, as most minions are, right? Fair. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, and so the big questions I had were exactly some of the ones that you had. Going forward, when I finished with 5.3, I was like, oh, man, what is sort of uh, Xenos' plan? What is this dude trying to do? He clearly wants to fight us, but, like, what, what, I, is he going to, like, how, how, are we, how are we fighting? What's going on here? I thought that was super interesting. Uh, of course, my big questions revolved around the Asians and learning more about Asm and who we are, right? Because I think once you're told you're someone, you now want to know everything about that. And you're like, oh, what does that mean? That really stuck with me. And then also, once I learned that, I was like, wait a minute. So what about all the other lore? Because essentially... Through Stormblood, you're told a, like a bunch of other lore of like the history of the world. And I was like, so what does that mean? And I thought that was super interesting as well. Because they're like, oh yeah, well this happened and this happened and this happened. And then the Asins are like, nah, that ain't real. You're just like, wait a minute. Then what? And so that whole thing I think is super interesting as well. And there's, you know, those are questions that I had. Fair. <laughs> some things i thought of yeah so all yeah, of so, it all of it yeah 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 the whole, i have no there's no if i had to pick a point that i was like this is the spot that i loved it would be uh the very 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 end there's a music cue and i think the song is called um Damn, it's something very positive. It's like something tomorrow or a new dawn or something like that. I don't remember what the song's called, but it's a song, it's the song that plays when um both in this scene, uh at the very end. No, it's not tomorrow, tomorrow, it's not eternal wind chat. It's literally the song that has the it's only played like four. It's called a new dawn. It's only played like four times in the total of this entire game. Once at the end of a rum born and then two other times. And then at uh, this uh, dawn of a new era is what it's called. Yeah. 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 Where it's like, and it's only played a few times once that music cue starts and they're like, Hippogriffs, oh, there's a flock of them coming. And Alice is just thrilled to have something to fight. And everyone, that one moment is such a perfect, like, you save the world again, but you're all good friends and you're still heroes. And you're going to go do a thing. And that moment, I think, really sums up the entirety of the game for me and, like, perfectly encapsulates the story. And that moment, I was just like, this is a winner. That's it. It's a solid scene. It's clearly they got someone in a studio to move and do the things and drop the staff. And Alice jumps off. Probably died from the fall. Doesn't matter. It's anime as hell. And then <laughs> all your characters have like a moment, right? Well, that's and, how, and how we found her at the beginning of Shadowbringer. She jumps off an impossibly tall ruin <laughs> like, and totally sticks the landing. Yeah. And that, I think that's a solid scene because it's like, you did all this stuff, you put in all this work, and boom, this is your like sort of character payoff that all these characters are better than where they were, but they're still the people you love. And I think that's a solid moment in this that I, I genuinely think is the best part of the expansion where it's like simple. It isn't a lot. Like character it's, moments uh, mean so much to me. It's the end of Fellowship. Like yeah. what you're describing, it's it's mm -hmm. the because it, it, it's that uh, that uplifting optimism at the end of Fellowship of the Ring, where we're we're 
you as a viewer are kind of reeling. I'm talking about the movie. Didn't read the books. <laughs> you as a viewer are kind of uh, reeling from the fact that everyone's kind of scattered to the winds. Mary and Pippin have been kidnapped. The uh, Frodo and Sam are no longer with Aragorn and Legolas and Gimli. But you, you have that scene where the, the trio are, are, are picking up the tracks of Mary and Pippin. And then we also check in on Frodo and Sam. And there's this optimism as they, they set forth on the next leg of their adventure. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, yeah, I like in the, the scene before, right before that leading up where the scions are just hanging out and <laughs> that Alizé is depressed. She didn't get new threads. Um, uh, I liken it to, you know, the, the, the kitchen scenes in Firefly. Like I, I love that stuff. Like when you love characters, mm -hmm. you want that. Uh, but you also don't want too much of it because then it doesn't feel special when you do get scenes like that, where you do just get to be a fly on the wall and experience peace with them. Obviously, there's a lot of like non-action scenes in Final Fantasy, but it's like so often you're talking about uh, about to head to action. Like I think of back in Stormblood when we had the I call it the thirsty Thancred scene where he's he's drinking and then he gives you the whole spiel on what he just spied on. That's not the same. That's not the same kind of scene as as right. what happens at the end of five three, where everyone's just kind of relaxed and like they get to take a moment to be friendly. Good choices. Good choices. Good game. Good game. Yeah. Uh, if you're somehow listening to this and you haven't played Final Fantasy XIV, first off, shame on you. Uh, secondly, Sorry go play it anyway. <laughs> yeah, the way, the way it all falls in is still, even if you know how it ends, the way it all comes together, you should go. You should. I watched Star Wars. No Invader was Luke's father. Play it anyway. It is incredible. Unfortunately, you do need to basically start with the prequels um, if you're going to play. <laughs> but hey the music's good just like in the boy movie. howdy it's worth it boy great. howdy <laughs> boy howdy is it worth it, it yeah I, i'm i'm so thrilled for you two because you get to like not only experience what's coming but from a place of just complete blindness oh boy i can't wait <laughs> All right, confirmed. We're really wrong about what we think is going to happen. Kyle. Yeah, there, there was. There was the big reveal. What I'm, what I'm curious about is, do you watch any patch trailers? No, no. no. Uh, Keep that up. Don't watch them. For me, it's it's merely models. I don't want to see boss models. That's like the number one thing that is like, oh, that was the that was the secret. That that's the the dangle. I need that. I also, would, I mean, it would drove me nuts if I had seen the primals. Like, uh, I know they did that, like, a special cut of the Shadowbringers trailer at FanFest. And mm. somewhere in there, they kind of put the primals line in there. And, and that would have just been like, what? Yeah, I've watched all the, again, I'm a crazy person. I've watched all the FanFest videos. And the reaction to the end of it was like, primals the crowd is like Bleh! like people are losing their mind <laughs> and i'm just like yeah that would have driven me crazy too yeah because i would have been like you can't you can't do that so yeah i think that's super interesting that they dropped that bit but they also if you watch fan fests and this is what i'm expecting at this one coming up in july um they don't show everything the three fan fests each one showed a different version of this of the cinematic of the trailer so the us one cuts out significant parts and then they slowly add bits to it as they release it at different fan fests and so yeah, and then the music in the background isn't even the music it's like the bootleg version of the music which is super interesting we're we, we've we've been told that and so we're, we're we're going to vegas mostly just a party with a bunch of final fantasy nerds we know we're not going to be caught up by then like uh um so we're it's not we're not going to like, like go watch the trailer but uh in the background i'm thinking i'm um, like can we figure out a way to get to japan <laughs> because if, if we could figure it out where we're caught up I don't, I, I, I know we play slow. I don't think we're going to play so slow that there's a concern about finishing end Walker before fan fest Japan. But uh, it's, it's, it's my, it's my pipe dream right now is like, what is, could we but, get caught up and go to the Japanese one? I mean, I think, and this is just speculation on my part. I could be very wrong. Uh, and this hopefully is no spoilers, but I think because 6.0 is the end of one story in theory, 7.0 shouldn't have anything to do with like I don't know. I mean, I it's I have no clue. Yeah, that's I guess I mean. you could be okay watching it. 
I don't know. I don't. I have, I have no idea. I don't, also, our MS curator uh, has said to me that I'm probably not going to. You know, they're not going to catch it. They don't want to see whatever it is. You know, is in that trailer mm. too. And so sure, sure. So our our guide might also be piecing out in the, be- the beginning, but. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, the launcher does things. Like, it has a big dude in a chair, and it says, like, oh, something is coming, and uh, he kind of looks like chaos from all the chaos memes I've watched. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, whoever that yeah. is. <laughs> I, I don't know if the two of you have any experience or know, or chat knows. This is my first fan fest. I have no idea what to expect there. I don't know. Like, I've watched videos of fan fests and i watch the covid festy thing they did but like do you show up watch a thing learn some information and then what do you do because it's in vegas i'm gonna let you know what i would do but what do you do at the, <laughs> like what is there to do there yeah like the only thing that makes one-to-one blizzcon sense in my brain is the crystal conflict the esports thing they're gonna do sure. i'm like okay that's an audience I'm like i'll be there i'll watch that whole thing i'm stoked about that i'm like yeah. i can go I, I i can go watch that guilt free like i'm excited but what what's in the middle ground like what how big is the venue is there stuff to look at do we are there hot dog stands inside are we expected to leave <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah like there's i'm so curious because again uh, i think the three of us come from the same like blizz connie perspective when i think of conventions in general there's a lot of games, a lot of stuff. Like, you can always be busy. BlizzCon is the closest thing I can think of to this, but BlizzCon also had four, sometimes four games available. And so you can move between them and play different things and experience different things. This is one game. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out what it is. Obviously, there's going to be a Primal concert. Obviously, the Symphony is the next day. Uh, but, like, what is. At the event, what is the thing you do during the day besides watch devs talk about something that's coming up that I am like, maybe I don't want to know that information, right? Like, what is the, I'm so curious. That's yeah. that's why I'm excited. Uh, like, like, there's a lot, a lot of folks are concerned we're going to get spoiled. And I'm like, I'm not going to plant my butt and watch the trailer. Like, yeah, I'm probably going to see a few cosplays and I'm like, oh, what's that? I don't know if you noticed. I'm dense. I don't pick up on a lot of stuff. <laughs> I saw one time toward Blizzard. I saw a poster for the next Hearthstone expansion, and I was just like, "Oh, that's cool, unused art." Not, I'm not shitting you. I literally looked at something I shouldn't have seen, and I was like, "Oh, what a cool piece of art you didn't use." And then League of Explorers came out, and I was like, "Holy shit!" I saw that hanging on the wall at Blizzard. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm usually so caught up in hanging out with friends that I don't get to see in person that like, I'm, I'm excited about the fact that I'm going to a con where I don't feel the need that I, I have to go see everything. Cause that's how it was at BlizzCon. I was like, I gotta be, I gotta be in three different places at the same time. Cause shit happens simultaneously. You had interviews upstairs. If you were lucky enough to, to get them. Um, and I wanted to watch esports. The amount of friggin' finals I missed at BlizzCon because I liked more than one Blizzard game was it, it was constant, True. absolutely constant. So I'm really excited about it. Like, really, it's an excuse to hang out with Kyle. Like, and we're going to Vegas, and it's like, yeah, of course we're gonna go. We're gonna go, like, take a look at what we can take a look at. We're gonna watch some Crystal Conflict. We're gonna. So to me, I'm like feeling very relaxed about it. Like uh, mm-hmm. I'm going and I'm like, we're, we're going to shoot some videos together. There's totally going to be a video of two idiots that haven't finished it. Walker go to fan. Fit. like, there's going to be a video that's titled like that. And it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. Um, so it's like, that's where my, that's my headspace going in. Like, I'm super interested in that. Yeah. I don't, is there anything that you're like excited for Kyle? Or are you just kind of like, I have no idea what to expect. I, I dug up a, uh, I dug up a schedule from, 2019 and it was it was nebulous at best with a lot of breaks too interesting so i i didn't really put it together as to I, what goes uh, down. like i'm wondering how much side stuff is there because like like a, like a blizzcon there would be like all kinds of weird little sideshows that i would never go enjoy because I, I didn't have the time to but what so, so uh Descartes Dom 77, when you say tons of side stuff, what does that mean? Like side stuff, again, is some amorphous concept 
I don't know what that side stuff is in what. I assume like, displays, like the art walk, kind of like a BlizzCon had, or like, oh, uh, it was Lightbringer, because I was on Lightbringer, so they had like the the server panel, like rotating slowly in a glass case, and I wooed at it for 10 minutes. It was up for auction, and I thought about bidding on it, because I also was on Lightbringer back yeah. in the day, mm. but um, it went for way too much money. Um, yeah, that, that kind of, they, they had Dark Moon Fair that I never spent any time in where they actually had like fair games. You can win shit. And this is me talking about BlizzCon. I don't, I don't know if, if they have side stuff, I'll probably go enjoy it because I never got to enjoy sides. I won't go to an art gallery because I'm sure it has N Walker spoilers in it. But right. um, like, that's, that's the kind of thing. But like, to me, like, I don't, I, the most fun I had at BlizzCon was hanging out with people in person. Of course. Yeah. So that's yeah. like what I'm looking most forward to is like, like, I, I, I can't wait to meet like any of our mods that go folks from our community from our free company and i haven't seen kyle in person since 2018 and jesse i've never hung out with you in oh yeah i remember <laughs> one point uh vaguely like awkwardly waving to you because i i think I, like i saw you at blizzcon i was like i know that guy and it was just that awkward thing where you saw me staring at you as we were passing in the hallway, and I was just like, "Yeah." And you waved, and you're like, "Yeah." That was that was it. <laughs> um, that was that was the ultimate but, problem at BlizzCon was that escalator was right next to the media room, so you'd always see everybody that you hadn't met passing on escalator. Uh huh. It was like the uh -huh. one. Uh, yeah, you had to, I, I, you had to make excuse, you had to make excuses. Either you had to put together a meetup. We're gonna do some sort of a meetup. We we don't know. We really don't know what form that's gonna take. But uh, hey, if you're interested, Jesse, let us know. Hell yes, I am. Um, my plans involve uh, getting up to no good. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's like bless everyone who's like I'm going to Vegas for two days of Final Fantasy fun, holding hands. To, I'm like. Y'all, you see those, they got big drinks that are huge, and then you can walk around with them, and the straws, like, they, they got it. I am I made getting them. throttled Saturday night. <laughs> I am going to sleep until, like, 1 p.m. Sunday. I, yeah. I ain't leaving until Monday afternoon. I am partying. I'll go easy Friday, because I don't want to miss Saturday, but right, Saturday night, I'm partying. Professional, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. You got to keep it professional, but after that, go nuts yeah i mean like yeah. it's vegas so what do i expect to leave with much less money absolutely <laughs> i'm going there to have fun and hang out with people and just celebrate some goofy antics and then if booze ends up in my hands i'm not gonna say no <laughs> yeah yeah also, I'm assuming there's really good cocktails. Uh, my wife and I love going to good cocktail bars whenever we're somewhere new. I'm assuming there's some good cocktails to be found in Vegas. So that's another thing I'm going to get up to. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it'll also be just like way too expensive. <laughs> that's <laughs> just that goes with the territory. Yeah. Uh, although I hear like that shit's like cheap in Vegas because, you know, the, they get you in the yeah. door with the cheap food and drink. And uh, I mean, also, hey, you, you have to like... walk through a casino to get there. What an interesting design. Well, Thankfully, this is just like if you don't want to see casinos and you don't want to see LA or LA Vegas proper, you don't have to because the convention center is like off the strip. So if you're one of the hotels around that, technically you don't have to live that life. But uh, <laughs> it's also Vegas. So I guarantee the convention center is going to have slot machines for some reason. So expect that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 No, I'm a, whatever the hotel is that's closest to the center, that's where I'm staying. Um, so we'll, uh, see how it goes interesting yeah I, I i definitely believe just like a pax there would be a uh like a trial to fight and you would get a t-shirt or something you know what i mean like they did that for years so i imagine there's something like that and i imagine there's some sort of like fun little game things to do i'm curious about all the extra stuff because Eventually, I think Blizzard realized that BlizzCon can only subsist on its games so much. Like there was one year where they had nothing and it was boring. Mm -hmm. It was so, called uh, 2010. It was the first BlizzCon I went to. And uh, literally, Chris Metzen gave a PowerPoint uh, as the opening ceremony. Geek is! Oh, oh yeah, no, I remember. Is, Geek is yeah. here. Geek yeah. is here. And of course, rough. it's my first BlizzCon, so I was stoked. I had a blast. And then I remember leaving that BlizzCon, coming home to all of the forum posts and the Wowhead articles. This is the worst BlizzCon of all time. And I'm just like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I just had a blast. I went to a Team Liquid party. I didn't even know it was a thing that existed. 
<laughs> yeah, I I but eventually they decided to add like there's a whole room of community stuff. There was one whole room that was all buttons. That was great. And I think I'm curious what that looks like in the Final Fantasy 14 space. All this is to say every cosplayer who dresses up like Tataru, I'm buying a drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that's, I mean. Like, I'm just saying, if there's like a Tataru meetup, I'm bringing like a few six packs or something. Okay. I'll be like, I am Tataru's. Yeah, I apologize in advance to every harsher font I see because I will ask you to lay on the ground so I can take a picture with you. Uh, I don't, I, yeah, I'm very sorry. I apologize in advance. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, is it can we set up a great Tataru gathering? Is there something we can do? We're like, you know, if you're going to go with Zataru, you got to be there at 5 p.m. at this spot. I'm just saying. Apparently in 2018, Koji Fox hosted something called Between Two Ferns, which lasted for an hour and 15 minutes. Where they just like roasted each other. Uh, yeah, that's like the they, Zach Galifianakis show where he yeah. sh he shits on a celebrity guest the entire time. Interactive fun with the audience where he brought a lore book to expand upon the world of Hydaelyn. In 2018. <laughs> That's so funny because now you can just buy that book, yeah. which is even like, like, yeah, all right. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm curious what people will take away from this. Mm. I, <laughs> I'm going to leave with less than what I came with, but it'll be great. Uh, everyone look forward to uh, the, the grinding drunk cast uh, where I have a task game in my pocket as we bar hop in Vegas. It'll be fun. <laughs> It'll just be the most indiscernible uh, piece of audio ever released yeah. into the world. Be it's a good like, time. I, I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm like uh, thrilled that there's a thing that there's no press. So like, I don't know what the vibe is. It's I think kinda it's kind of kinda like, cool. I, yeah. As someone who very much got to reap the benefits of, of media passes at BlizzCon for years, um, I th I do think it's really cool that it's this strictly like fan type thing. It's not treated as as much as a piece of promotion even though it clearly is like they're promoting what the next expansion is going to be but it i think it improves the overall communal vibe that they that they don't do that kind of stuff yeah um it does make me fearful that uh my pipe dream of getting to go to the japanese one will be basically impossible but uh you know i'm not giving up on I, it. I mean if it's anything like the uk us if you weren't on a us based server you couldn't even apply. Exactly. To, exactly. Mm, yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I mean. Who knows if we we uh, if we find someone who has a Japanese account? They're like, I wasn't gonna go anyway. You want two tickets? Like, you know, you never know. But um, I also may just fire up a Japanese account and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> I hope. I hope they see that and do not let you get one. <laughs> I hope they're like, this is a con. <laughs> No, it is. It is a convention that I would like to attend. <laughs> it absolutely. I pay, I pay my sub. I pay my sub. <laughs> uh, I, anyway, I, I think it's well-intentioned. I think it's well-intentioned, as was this show, as was this show. So uh, uh, sorry for dumping on Gridania almost two hours ago, everybody. Okay. If you started in Gridania, shout out. Good Full circle, full circle. <laughs> shout out to the Gridanians. Well, Jesse. Is there anything you want to know before we go? Is there anything you, any questions you left lingering that you want to assault our minds with? Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. But yeah, it's got to go yeah. through the filter. Um, a lot, mm. but I'm not going to say anything <laughs> because it is, if I ask you a question, it's going to lead you to spoiler territory. Trust me, while we were talking, I was thinking of questions and I was like, nah, nope, can't ask that one. Nope, can't ask that one. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm unfortunately colored by the fact that I've lived the experience and walked to the if, end. So I if know you want to feel goes. better, uh, if someone watching or listening right now could send uh, Jesse the timestamp of Joe cat unintentionally spoiling us when he was on the program, uh, you know, just, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. I can do better than Joe cat. I believe in myself. <laughs> we, we appreciate the effort. <laughs> we appreciate the effort. Um, rad. So, uh, I think the. Brings us to the end of this program, uh, Mr. Jesse Cox. If folks are somehow unaware of where to find you on the internet, where can they do so? 
Yeah, um, you can find me pretty much anywhere Jesse Cox is. If you are just like tired of hearing links, jessecox.com is all the links to everything I do. And the most recent thing we're doing is uh, my goofball friends and I decided that, uh, look, we like Star Wars, just not really new Star Wars. So we have created a podcast <laughs> where we're going back and starting with the original book that came out right before the first movie. We're going through every old Legends content that isn't canon. And I'm going to let you know. Oh, cool. It is so fun to just have a podcast that's basically a book club where we sit there and we talk about stuff that does not matter. Yo, good book. Good book good trilogy uh and i only really like the first one <laughs> if i'm being honest i don't like the way a certain character's end happens but whatever that's 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 for a mm. podcast uh, I, I, but I, I don't like how they just sideline leia for two whole novels <laughs> i mean and then leia gets several books though leia, leia gets like a lot of books so it's you know um they had to introduce mara jade and look I yeah. love Leia, yeah. but I love Mara. Anyway, so uh, we're going to do, we're, we're going through the whole thing. And uh, right now, over, on, just like look up Star Wars Old Canon Book Club. It's out there somewhere. It's a spin on the fact that we had a Star Wars New Canon Book Club. And we loved it up until the point where people around Last, uh, around, uh, Last Jedi, it became very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for for the community? Mm. Not fun to be in. Mm. And so oh, everyone yeah. was fighting all the time. And we were like, we're done. It's a shame because the, I, I really like the Phasma novel. It's, it's rough. Yeah, it's like fun to dig into stuff. And now we are uh, on, we have two episodes up right now. It's literally just the, the movie and uh, the book that came out before. And if you want a good, re read the original Star Wars book. It's crazy. That's why I don't let I you know. know. It doesn't start the same. It straight up says the intro is in an. I think it, it's something like along the lines of in another time in another place or something like that, or like it is not in a galaxy far, not, not far quite away. as iconic oh as it. No, but it does add a little bit to like this could be anywhere. It doesn't matter, and it's kind of and that's kind of the vibe of the whole podcast. Where since it doesn't matter and none of this like dave filoni's world doesn't connect to this at all this is all just if anything it's crazy fan fiction at this point it's, and it's not great uh, unprecious no need to be precious about it yeah and so you can sit there and read splinter of a mind's eye and be like what is this book about splinter of mind's eye is nuts and then you Absolutely realize nuts yeah you realize like oh man they did darth was literally that dude's first name yep darth vader was named darth and you know the story behind that right fact, the that that was a canned sequel to a new hope yeah 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 they yeah. didn't know they were gonna get empire strikes back so they wrote out because the guy who wrote uh, uh splinter, splinter of mind's eye was basically doing like the sequel yep and it yep. is trippy y'all it's crazy <laughs> and it's yeah, what star yeah. wars could have been look at layer like full-on romantic in that book mm -hmm. it is aft also yeah, it's like not, they weird, are not brother and sister it is weirdly low stakes too it like it reads like an indiana jones adventure th that you just copy and paste the, the star wars cast into it's wild and yeah. then you know we went on and we we watched uh the holiday special that's coming out soon oh perfect oh, boy well what done. a treat i yeah, consider yeah. myself the biggest star wars fan in uh in, in my life like i think i love star wars more than anyone else i know and i had i've tried three times to make it through the <laughs> holiday special i can't do it i made I, it through the ewoks movies and i can't make it through this holiday special i proudly you know what i was in to the holiday special until the last like 20 minutes when like a full on 20 minute music number starts and it's insane <laughs> and then you realize there's lyrics to music in star wars you know the song uh, star wars song has lyrics oh no that leia sings and it is crazy the whole thing's amazing uh there, there's it, like that a, oh god that it's hurts. just it's a cocaine nightmare that's what that that's what that special is yes the actual b arthur one if you want to see it i think someone put it up on youtube it's insane yep it's genuinely insane. yeah the whole the whole thing's on youtube um yeah you know, and so we're just going through it and it's cool as hell and it's nice to there's it's zero stakes no one on the internet can be like if you don't like this character, you won't like the next 12 books. It's like, no, we don't like whatever. It doesn't matter. So, yeah, that's our newest thing. And, uh, you know, I'm going to sh shamelessly plug that. We asked you to. It's not yes, shameless. Yes.
It was invited plugging. Right, but I probably should have stopped plugging it about six and a half minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Star Wars. I don't think any excuse to talk about Star Wars. Uh, uh, Kyle, do you have outro music? Uh, oh, oh, there you go. oh, it's Jammy. Oh, yeah. It's Jammy this week. I like it. I like it. Well, we want to thank our badass patrons for supporting us on Patreon. You can support that everything Kyle and I make together by going to support our bromance. Dot com that'll take you straight to the Patreon, where uh, if you sign up, uh, there's different perks for different levels, but no matter what level you sign up for, you're going to get access to our wonderful members-only channels in our Discord, so go check that out. When we do Q&A, that is where all of our questions come from. We've got a question for the host channel right in there, so drop them in there. And we want to thank our recent patrons, so thank you so much to Misplaced Geek. I want to thank Mary C. Shannon W, thank you for becoming a patron. I also want to give a shout out to Catherine C and Harry O'Connor for upping their pledges. So thank you for the raises, boss. Thank you so much. And we want to thank our legendary level backers that we thank each and every week. Sean B, Mike R, Stephen J, Das, and Cheesy Bob. Really appreciate the support, everybody. And other than that, uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Why, you might ask? Well, first of all, for our nonsense. But also, you would know that we recorded today's podcast a little later than usual. We gave a little update over there. You can follow Kyle at Kyle Ferguson. I'm at Garrett Art, or we have a joint account at Garrett and Kyle. Give that a follow. Other than that, everything we do can be found on our YouTube channel. Just search for Grinding Gear on YouTube and give us a follow. It's where we do the podcast, it's where we do the Final Fantasy streams. It's where our weekly Wednesday videos drop, which one Jesse Cox referenced multiple times today. So. It's watch. good. They're, they're good editors and stuff. It's very good content. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Jesse. Thanks so much, everybody, for listening. And until next week, GG. No take care, Kyle? Oh, take care. Excuse me. I was just agreeing. I was digging. I was vibing. This was massive. We, we, did, a, we, did, we did like a deep dive. This was, this was processed. I, I had questions. Yeah, no, I was they, were, they were great questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm bracing myself for near in an hour. Heading into near part two. Oof. Wait, did, wait, did Garrett? <laughs> who's Garrett? He's gone. <laughs> he, he ditched. He was like, I'm out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there he is. All right. In, oh, 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 he, oh, oh, nope. Oh, gone. Nope. gone. He's gone. All good. Uh, enjoy your stream tonight. Thank Have you very a good much. one. Thanks for having me on again. You guys are the best. Uh, see, hopefully, I'll see you on the internet. But hey, if not, fan fest, see we'll you hang fan out. fest. Hell yeah! I I think oh. I'm back. Whoa, Whoa! What the hell was that? Yep. that was... Welcome back, Garrett. <laughs> yeah, I uh, experienced the Discord crash we have been oh, experiencing. Oh, that's great that it happened at the end. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can see. Yeah. You. Oh yeah, we just chose to ignore yeah. you. Yeah, I can only Confuse see you. myself, but I'm in the call. This oh. is the weirdest shit ever. Oh, well, uh, we were saying I hope to see you at FanFest, Jesse. Yeah, I'm just saying goodbye. Yeah. That's all. You oh, yes. got to go run your stuff now. Yeah, we. I got to shove food in my face in less than an hour so we can, uh, can do, do near raids. I believe. I believe. Yeah, are you well, going to try and do? Oh, never mind. Never mind. I'm not going to ask you this question. Mm. Oh, boy. Oh. I was going to ask you if you do the finish live it. letter, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't do the live letter. Oh, no, we're not going to do that. At all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. We don't watch live letters. No. Yeah. We don't, we don't, we don't do them. We don't, we don't do that stuff. But, I'm going to uh, see if yeah. I have the fortitude to wake up at 4 a.m. <sighs> oh, you're going <sighs> for it. If I don't, it. I'll yeah. roll back into bed, but I'll give it a shot. I'll try. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Oh, my God. Time sensitive content. Ugh. Yeah. All right. I'm out of here, gentlemen. Have Thanks a good for your one. Time. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. yeah my pleasure. Bye, See guys. You, Have a good See weekend. You later. Right, it's going to break, but uh, we had we had some fabulous super chatters during that. Uh, Garrett, you got to, but we, we're going in an hour, so we'll have. We'll, we'll, we'll. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I do need to, I do need to basically run. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm backing up the the show right now because yes. i'm fearful that that crash caused an issue so i just want to make sure i get this thing backed up somewhere safe cool yeah i got i got my backup record as well as well as the video so we're good there cool what episode was this 39 there we go All right, backing <laughs> it up. there's some great questions in here uh top of the stream we'll, we'll get some of these questions too because we're gonna be back in an hour so we'll see y'all real soon all right. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for hanging. 
And we will see you very, very soon you for soon. near raid. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Hang on. I got to find the button. There we go.